You're watching Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Welcome to the Sun Belt Championship on ESPN, presented by Papa John's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Cajun Field in Lafayette on an 80 degree December day. It's Louisiana ranked 24th in the country, taking on Appalachian State for the Sun Belt Championship in Billy Napier's final game as the Louisiana head coach. Tomorrow he will be in day one as the head coach of the Florida Gators. There was no Sun Belt title game last year because of COVID, but the last two games featured these two teams. In 2018, Zach Thomas had two touchdown runs. App State won 30 to 19. Then the next season, 2019, an interception return for a touchdown by Josh Thomas put Appalachian State up 42 to 17. Louisiana came back but ended up falling short as App State won a second consecutive title. And hi everybody, Dave Pash alongside Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville down on the field. Dusty, from a player's perspective, what does this mean for these young men? Because it's not like they're playing at Alabama or Michigan where you're worried about the college football playoff or right now the NFL. For these guys, this is bigger than a bowl game. This will be for many the biggest game they play in it's their lives. It's championship lives. Saturday, Dave, and it's all about today. And listen, App State's thinking they, they got rematch on their mind. They were embarrassed on this field earlier this season. This is the best the Sun Belt has to offer. And both of these teams want to go out the right way. You've got a Louisiana team in Billy Napier's final game and an App State team that had 28 seniors, 14 super seniors, so much on the line in this ball game. We get the crowd a champion at the end. Sean Clark in his second year as the head coach of Appalachian State. There are four years as an assistant, played offensive line in Boone as well. It was a rough start to the season for Appalachian State with a loss to then number 22 Miami and also they got blown out here in Lafayette against Louisiana but there was a turning point October 20th they beat Coastal Carolina which was ranked in the top 15 and after that the Mountaineers won their final five games and they rolled in every single game heading into today so Dusty you've got an offense that's hot and you also have an App State team that's actually favored in this game despite getting blown out here earlier. Well, it's a very good football team. It's a well-rounded football team, offense and defense defensively. Lead college football with over eight tackles for loss per game. And on the offensive side, man, are they rolling right now. Balance. They can run it. They can throw it. Chase Bryce has a complement of wide receivers to distribute the football to. As productive a trio as you'll find anywhere in the country, not named Ohio State. Corey Sutton's a size guy. Deep threat. Malik Williams, a dangerous guy out of the slot. And Thomas Hennigan going to start his 64th game here today for App State. And with more on this turnaround midseason for Appalachian State, let's check in with Tom. Well, thanks, Dave. The week following the loss here in Lafayette, 41 to 13, App State head coach Sean Clark went to his football team before playing host to Coastal Carolina and said, guys, how do we fix this? They didn't dress down players. It wasn't a screaming and yelling match. He brought in his players council, said, guys, what do you need me to do to make you more comfortable to get us back on track? They said, quite honestly, coach, we feel like our bodies are beat up. So what did they do? Coaches listened to the players, started lightening the practices. They have not been in pads since that point. That week, they beat Coastal Carolina and have been playing terrific defense. Great quarterback play out of Chase Bryce. So a player's coach in Sean Clark, players responding to the coach. But a tall order today because they're playing a Louisiana team that's one of the hottest teams in all of college football. They started the season with a loss against the Texas team that looked like it might end up challenging for the Big 12 championship. They lost 38 to 18 that day, but then reeled off 11 straight victories. That's tied for the third longest active streak in the country. And plus they went unbeaten in the Sun Belt, the first undefeated conference record in program history. And in a day and age where there are coaches leaving major programs and heading elsewhere and bailing on their teams who are still in contention for the college football playoff. I know it's a little different here in Louisiana, but Billy Napier takes a big job at Florida, yet he told us yesterday it was non-negotiable. He was staying to coach his team today in the championship game. No question, so much respect and admiration 
for, for Coach Napier to be here and see this thing through his fourth year. And he said, we've had a goal to, to win a conference championship right here on this field in Lafayette. They have an opportunity to do that here today. He has an unbelievable relationship with his team. His team loves him. They built culture, and he wants to see it through before he moves on to Gainesville, Florida, to be the head coach for the Florida Gators. Kickoff is next. The Sun Belt Championship from Lafayette, Louisiana, and Appalachian State. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. It's December, but it doesn't feel like it. It is hot and humid here in Louisiana for the Sun Belt title game between Appalachian State and the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. No two programs have met more over the last four seasons than these two schools playing in the regular season and then in championship games in 2018 and 2019. App State won the first eight meetings and Louisiana has captured the last two including earlier this season 41 to 13 on October 12th on this field. App State won the toss and deferred. So Louisiana will start with the football. Both these teams are going bowling just a question of where and there is not an automatic bowl set up for the winner just depends it'll come down to choices for specific bowls as Chris Smith takes the return for Louisiana out to about the 25 yard line. Let's take a look at the quarterback for Louisiana the most decorated players in the history of this school. Unbelievable character as the true leader of this team. He has respect of everyone in the building. His escapability, mobility, extending plays is outstanding. He's continued to improve as a passer, takes good care of the football, and at the very tops of just about every list in program history at the quarterback position. And most importantly, he is a winner. And when he speaks, this entire team listens. Lot put on the quarterback in this Billy Napier offense. Only second to Jake DeLome, who had a long NFL career as the passing leaders. They run a jet sweep here to Peter LeBlanc on the first play, and he gains about a yard, so App State was all over that. Well, this defense for App State is unbelievably sound across the board. All three levels, they have legit playmakers. Tackle well, run to the football, and create a lot of negative plays. They change the line of scrimmage. And it's good on good. This front for App State, as good as you'll see in the Sun Belt, and probably the best offensive line in the conference for Louisiana. Here's Chris Smith, first team all Sun Belt tailback, and not much there off the right side. Gain of a yard or two. A couple of players to look out for here today. Might be the two best NFL pro prospects. Both have senior bowl invites. Max Mitchell, the right tackle, he's been outstanding this year. Really, I think he's a technician with his footwork. Very powerful. And DeMarco Jackson, the defensive player of the year in the Sun Belt, all over the field. Great tackler, tough, and unbelievably productive for this defense. This third and long situation, Dave, not where they want to be. This is right exactly what Dale Jones, defensive coordinator for App State, wants to get this offense in. They'll get after the quarterback and also terms of tackles for a loss or number one in the country. Lewis throwing a deep ball here and it's on target. Caught inside the 40 by LeBlanc down to the 36 yard line. That was an excellent pass downfield by Lewis. Well, I love the protection here. They're going to bring pressure and it's a great pocket. For, for Lewis to step into the throw, and how about the touch over the head of the cornerback, Stephen Jones, and perfectly placed to the wide receiver, Peter LeBlanc. Outstanding third and long throw there by Levi Lewis. Gain of 35 down to the 37 of Appalachian State. They go back to the run game here with Chris Smith, and that's their best run so far, down to the 30 for about seven yards. Smith, first team all Sun Belt in terms of all purpose yardage. He's their kick returner as well. Had a big game in the win against Appalachian State earlier this season, had a pair of touchdowns. He's got excellent speed, home run capability. You saw the vision, the cutback there on first down. You see three different running backs today between Montreal Johnson, Chris Smith, and Imani Bailey. We roll them in. 
They've rushed for almost 250 as a team in the win earlier this season against App State. Some pressure on Lewis. He has to throw it away. That was DeMarco Jackson, the guy you talked about earlier. He's got 15 tackles for a loss this season. It'll be third down and long. Or time third down to, and three, excuse me. Time just blitz up well there. The B gap comes wide open. Quick pressure right in the face of Levi Lewis. You know, one thing here in this third and medium situation, Levi Lewis, good runner with the football. And as Billy Napier told us yesterday, he likes to save his running ability to later in the season. There's nothing left to save it for here. Levi Lewis, a very active runner in this situation here. This could be four down territory, too, as well. They're going to run it up the middle, and the back, Smith, gets slammed to the ground by Jackson. So fourth down and three, and Tom mentioned four down territory. They don't have a good kicking situation. Nate Snyder just three of eight on the season, as long as 45. So this was never a question for Billy Napier. They were going for it on fourth and three. Yeah, no question. A no-brainer here. Clearly, as Tom pointed out, four down territory. You could tell with the play decision there. Wonder, do you try to get Levi Lewis on the perimeter with a run pass option here in this spot? A huge stop for App State. They go empty here on fourth down. The play clock down to three. Will they burn a timeout? Nope, they get the play away. And in trouble is Lewis being chased. Got to let it fly downfield. He does. It's caught, and it's a first down to the 20-yard line to Dante Fleming. Boy, how about the patience of Levi Lewis? Boy, talk about making something out of nothing. It's good pressure initially by nine, Demetrius Taylor. But as we talked earlier, Levi Lewis, cool, calm, collected, just continues to float to the sidelines, and he locates his target, Dante Fleming. Outstanding individual effort and great patience there by Levi Lewis converting on fourth down. Great job with his eyes, too. You know, normally that's a no-no. Don't throw back across your body to the middle of the field. But he knew he had to make a play, used his eyes, located it to a dart. So play eight of the drive after getting the first down. Here's Smith trying to find some running room, and he gets a yard, and then a flag comes in. Tackle made by Nick Hampton. It'll be a hold. Kyle Olson is our referee today. Holding offense, number 64. 10 yard penalty, first down. Shane Bello, their center. Don't forget tonight on ABC, it's Pitt Wake Forest, the Subway ACC Championship game. Heisman Trophy implications there tonight, Dave. Not just conference championship. Great to see two different teams, not Nate Clemson in that matchup, but for Kenny Pickett, very much alive in the Heisman Trophy race. If he can put on a big performance, to put him even more so at the top of that conversation. It's a great year for the Panthers. Chance to close it out with an ACC title. Here is Johnson, true freshman running back. And only a gain of a couple. They got about seven yards on one run. All the other rush plays have gone for about two. Watching DeMarco Jackson. He doesn't make that play, but he's downhill right now, forcing offensive linemen off. Double teams opening up there. DeAndre Dingle Prince to make that play right around the line of scrimmage. Impressive watching the tape of DeMarco Jackson in here early. You can already feel his impact on this game. When you look at the big guy, 99 in front of him, holding off blockers, so Jackson's free to run to the football, doesn't have to deal with many people in his face. Taking the play clock down to two, they bring pressure, and Lewis in trouble, gets rid of the ball, and it's caught inside the five, and a touchdown. Another great play by Lewis. Michael Jefferson came free and is the first to reach Pater. Man, oh. that was really impressive opening drive by Levi Lewis there. Well, it pays to have a veteran quarterback, Dave. And Billy Napier, when we asked him about Levi Lewis, he didn't get fully emotional, but you can tell just what Levi Lewis means to this program, what he means to him, and what a start for the senior quarterback here today. Nate Snyder on for the point after. 
And so it's 7 nothing after a nine play 75 yard drive. Well, as a defender, you think you got Levi Lewis bottled up, but you're left hugging air and drive you crazy as a defender. Great escape ability by the quarterback. And how about the route? Excellent job there by Jefferson. Cajuns up early. And welcome back to Lafayette. Great shot there. Yeah, it is. Seven nothing raging Cajuns in front. Sun Belt Championship game. COVID kept the game from being played a year ago. Nine play, 75 yard drive to start. Four West Division titles and two bowl wins and the co-championships in 2005 and then last year because of the fact there wasn't a championship game, but they've yet to win the title game outright. Short kickoff fielded by Virgil at the three, and he's up to about the 21-yard line. Chase Bryce is the quarterback at Appalachian State. He was the backup to Trevor Lawrence for a couple years at Clemson. Threw for over 1,000 yards in 25 games. Then he transferred to Duke a year ago, played in every game, ended up throwing 15 interceptions more than anybody else in the country. This year, he's had a good season. Led the Sun Belt in yards and completions. Named Newcomer of the Year and third team all Sun Belt. Had some turnover issues early, and especially in the losses, but really kind of settled in here and throws an excellent deep ball. They want to run the football and take shots off the play action. They will run it here on first down to Noel. He's able to get the edge and gain about six or seven before he's thrown out of bounds. Nate Noel, 10th straight year, App State has had a 1,000-yard rusher. Noel led the conference this year with 1,034 coming into today. He is a been an excellent running back for this offense slasher I think he's got excellent vision the speed and quickness doesn't have great size but he runs strong for his size also good in pass protection a well-rounded running back here for the Mountaineers they couldn't run the ball in the first meeting and that forced Bryce into a situation where he had to throw and he threw two picks in that game he'll throw it here and the pass is caught in the middle of the field it, Corey Sutton to the 40 and inside the 35 there is a penalty marker down but somehow Corey Sutton was wide open and the flag is at the 30 yard line back in App State territory on the far side and this will come back. Now to player downfield offense number 74 five yard penalty second down. My goodness Anderson Hardy was about 12 yards downfield blocking that time. No question, Dave, right here off the left side. I mean, look how, look how far downfield he is there. He's pleading his case down here, though. He was blocking run, <laughs> and it was not run. I will say, I was a, if it was run, he was doing a heck of a job. Yes, he had the guy on skates. No question. Costly penalty, though, for App State. It was a nice find there by Chase Bryce, his big target coming open over the middle, but negated. After Hardy too far down the field. Yeah, 41 yard play. Wiped out. Play clock down to one. They got to snap it here. They did not get it off in time. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Take a look at some of the impact players on this side of the football. Nate Noel, as we talked about, he's been outstanding over a thousand yards for this offense. And then defensively, Chauncey Manak, outstanding edge rusher for the Raging Cajuns, had four sacks a couple of weeks ago against Liberty. He's played stand-up outside linebacker, hand in the ground defensive end. He's got great versatility and a key piece to this defense. After the delay of game, it's second down and 13. Bryce in trouble, and he gets sacked back inside the 10-yard line. Zion Hill, who the coaches say is their best defensive player. By number four, Zion Hill. Well, it's Taylor Humphrey. Watch the big man press it here, and then you see Hill come inside and clean it up. But it starts with Humphrey owning the center, forcing Chase Bryce to move to his right. And Zion Hill, he's undersized for a three technique, but his lateral quickness, his hand movement, 
Man, he does such a good job getting off of blocks and a quality interior pass rusher with a big stop on second down. He'll just be conservative here, running on third down and 22. And a vicious tackle that time on Noel by Chris Moncrief, but it was a legal play, no flag, and it's fourth down. This is a very good defense. They're 13th in the country coming into this week. In points allowed, they give up under 19 per game. Quality start there for Louisiana, both sides of the football. But for App State, if they can't win the line of scrimmage, be able to establish their run game, it's going to set up bad situations for this offense. Nice job there early from Louisiana up front. Xavier Sabach to punt. Eric Gare is deep, and the fair catch is made at the 45-yard line. 42-yard punt, no return midway through the first quarter of the 2021 Sun Belt Championship game in Lafayette. The Sun Belt Championship on ESPN is presented by Papa John's. It's bacon mania at Papa John's with the new triple bacon pizza. Order today and in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. I got a lot of gators here on campus. That'll be something that uh, Billy Napier is already used to uh, heading to. Oh, there's a gator. Look at him having fun coming down the hill. Love that. Speaking of Gators, Billy Napier set to be the next head coach of the Florida Gators. And talking with him yesterday, this week, fully dedicated during the week of practice time, meetings to this football team in the mornings before and late at night, focusing on Florida. But the way this team is dialed in, focused, you could tell the new job, not any kind of distraction for this team. Lewis in trouble, and he gets walloped for a sack back at the 43-yard line. But Back to, to that point as Nick Hampton gets the sack, Dusty. I, I feel like it needs to be repeated again what you said because a lot of people assume, okay, oh, he's going to have to come out for a play. Lewis lost his helmet. It wasn't because of penalty, so the new quarterback's going to come in. But the fact that, you know, Billy Napier told us, my job did not change this week mm. with the exception of getting less sleep. I worked on Florida at night before I went to bed and when I got up in the morning. So I got about five hours sleep. Otherwise, I was completely committed to having normal hours with this team so they would know that I was committed. Chandler Fields, by the way, is in for this play. Freshman who has thrown 10 passes this year. You imagine they'll just run it? No, play action. And he's going to throw it downfield through the hands of the receiver, Jalen Williams, incomplete. Madison Cohen in coverage for App State. It really is a testament, though, to finish off your point for Billy Napier and how important this program is to him and to see this thing through. And again, that's a rarity in today's college football world with a job of the magnitude of Florida. Tip of the cap and much respect for Billy Napier being here and making sure that his team got his best this week. We asked him why. He said loyalty. There's got to be some loyalty. Mm. They gave me a shot four years ago to be a head coach here. And this game is more important, with all due respect to the bowl for, for them, this game is more important, winning a championship. Lewis back on the field in trouble, and he gets drilled back at the 30 by DeMarco Jackson to force a punt. Well, we knew, talking with Dale Jones yesterday, they were going to bring pressure. They feel that they can go man-to-man -man on the outside and force the hand. We got pressure coming from all over. And then be sure to keep your eye right here on DeMarco Jackson. Bringing pressure from all over. DeMarco Jackson stays alive. Good job by Levi Lewis initially evading the first defender. But DeMarco Jackson has a nose for the football and a big sack to get his offense the ball back. So Reese Burns, who is in the top 15 in the country in punting, first team all Sun Belt, will boot it away from his 20 yard line. And hits this one hard and deep. And it'll be a fair caught by Thomas Hennigan at the 25 yard line. This is an Appalachian State program with a lot of success over the course of its history, going back to being a FCS national champion three straight years, and then one of the greatest upsets in college football history, September 2nd, 2007, the win against Michigan. Then they join FBS. This was just in 2014. They joined FBS, and they've won this conference four times, 16, 17, 18, and 19. 
And as you look at the teams with the most FBS wins since 2014, that's really good company. Again, for a wow. program that wasn't even in the FBS prior to that year. Incredible job that they've done with several coaches. It speaks to the culture and buy-in from everybody involved at App State. Here's Cameron Peoples on the field, gets the carry, and good job keeping the feet moving. Gain of about eight for Peoples, who had an 1,100-yard season a year ago. That's the identity of this offense. You see that inside zone there, good movement off the left side, 88 Henry Pearson leading up inside. That's Cameron Peoples, 6'2", 220. He's got speed, but a physical runner, 13 touchdowns on the season. They really do have a quality trio of running backs you're going to see today. But that run right there, the inside and outside zone, that's the staple bread and butter of this offense. That's good success on first down. People's second team all Sun Belt, and he's the backup. We talked about what he did last year. He had over 300 yards in the bowl game. He gets the carry again, picks up a first down, yeah. out to the 36-yard line. And if it's not broke, don't change anything. Go right back to the exact same play. Nice piece of running off the left side. Move the chains. You know, Dusty, you talk about Cameron Peoples as the big back. You've also got number four, Datrick Harrington. And we've talked about Nate Noel, one of your impact players today. When this season started, Noel was third team on the depth chart. So he's worked himself into this to be the starter. Meanwhile, an injury, Damian Daly, the left guard, is banged up for App State. Be sure to catch this week's NFL countdown Sunday at a special time of 9 Eastern on ESPN. That's because at noon the college football playoff rankings will be revealed on ESPN. Lamar Jackson goes one on one with Steve Young. Randy Moss sits down with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin of the Tampa Bay Bucks. That playoff ranking show is going to be fire. Oklahoma State already goes down today Whew. in vogue with the way this season's gone all year. Now back to that in a second as Bryce throws here on first down finds Thomas Hennigan and he's got a first down. What has to happen now for Baylor to get into the college football playoffs? Ooh, great question. Iowa needs to beat Michigan. I think that needs to happen. I think that you need to have Alabama lose to Georgia and it would definitely help their cause if Cincinnati fell. So basically they need everyone ahead of them to lose not named Georgia would give them at least an opportunity to find their way into the college football playoff in that scenario though Notre Dame uh, probably one of the better recipients if those teams do fall and lose today. Three and a half to go here in the first seven nothing Louisiana App State near midfield Peoples gets the call again a helmet goes flying off and Peoples into rage and Cajun territory to the 47 for a six yard run Peoples 6 2 220 pounds brings a little bit different running style than Nate Noel meanwhile a Chauncey Manac who's one of their most important players on defense has to go out for a play that's the second time we've seen a helmet go off that's cost a player a rep and the last time it happened was to Louisiana quarterback Levi Lewis. Price to the air on second and four but in trouble and sacked by Zion Hill the pocket breaking down right in front of the quarterback and a loss of about six. OK so here we go nose tackle is going to come here and then we're going to have four Hill wrap around. This is called a knot nose first tackle second and it's a really good job by 99 Taylor Humphrey picking and carrying the attention of the center to move with him and allows the looper Zion Hill to get a clean shot downhill and what an impact Zion Hill has already had here in the first quarter of this game. He's got two sacks already. He had four and a half the entire season. Third and 11 for Appalachian State. And a timeout here called by the Mountaineers. That will leave them with two. Coming up tonight on ABC, it's the Subway ACC Championship game from Charlotte. Kenny Pickett, Heisman Trophy candidate, 40 passing touchdowns, good for second in the country. Sam Hartman had a great year for Wake Forest. Just weird to see that and not have Clemson playing in that ACC championship game. First time in seemingly forever. 
But you got two really good quarterbacks going at it tonight. Maybe the conference of quarterbacks this year. They've had phenomenal quarterback play all season long. Hartman's also impacted this season with his legs. Should be a phenomenal matchup. And if you like offense, tune in tonight on ABC. The game should be stellar. You know what I love about that? We had hit early in the season, week two. That's exactly what we said with Kenny Pickett he talked about, to come back, to break records, and lead his team to give them a chance to win a conference crown. Very happy for Kenny Pickett coming back and making the most of this senior season. Right, the coaches were surprised. They thought he was going to go yeah. to the NFL and be a third to fifth round pick. Now he's turned himself into one of the top quarterbacks taken in the draft, more than likely, as Bryce takes a shot downfield, and it's incomplete. Inside the 10, intended for Virgil, A.J. Washington in coverage. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, it looked like Virgil got confused when that ball was in the air. He tries to come underneath the cornerback, A.J. Washington, and that ball was back over his outside shoulder. That's Virgil misreading that football in the air and good positioning by the cornerback, A.J. Washington. And Dusty, if he just keeps running, he might actually run right under that football. Yeah, he, he misdiagnosed that, Tom. Yeah, I, I don't know why he stopped and pulled up. Xavier Sabach to punt, just got it away. And taken at the 16 yard line by Gare. In trouble and just dives out past the 10. Second meeting this season between Louisiana and Appalachian State. They played here back in October, and it was all Rage and Cajuns. Levi Lewis scored on the opening drive. Chris Smith had a 21 yard touchdown run after an interception of Bryce. They had four takeaways. Bryce threw two picks and Louisiana won easily 41 13. All Cajuns in that first one. And man, these two teams know each other as well as any two teams in all of college football. Seventh meeting in the last four years between Louisiana and App State. Louisiana starts this drive at their 12 yard line and they'll keep it on the ground here. Smith trying to get the edge. Can he's dragged down by TD Roof? Did get positive yardage, but only a one yard pickup. This open field tackle there by TD Roof. It looked as if Smith was going to be able to get to the edge, but good closing speed on the football. A nice tackle out there. Roof doesn't get Smith on the ground. There's a lot of space out in front. First time for Louisiana hosting the Sun Belt Championship game. Yet to win it outright. Trying to send Billy Napier off with a victory before he starts his new job tomorrow at Florida. Running room for Smith this time, got the first down out to the 25-yard line. Gain of 11 before Caden Smith knocks him down. Really good movement off the right side of the offensive line. That's big Max Mitchell caving everything down in 50. Nathan Thomas pulling around, getting out in front. Big hole off the right side. Louisiana offensive line doing work. That run for Chris Smith. Smith with five carries for 22 yards already here in the opening quarter. Here is the sixth rushing attempt, and he's tackled for a loss. Appalachian State leads the country in that category. It's TD Roof again. They average about eight TFLs per game. Well, it starts up front, and you heard Tom mention it earlier. 99, Jordan Earl really sets the point, allows those backers to fly around. But it's also the aggressive nature of defensive coordinator Dale Jones. These linebackers, they've got a hair trigger. When that ball is given, they are downhill right now. Creates a lot of disruption and a lot of negative plays, as you just mentioned. We'll Dusty, see. not only are they downhill, but they very rarely get cross-faced. They're always maintaining leverage of the football. Doesn't so look like Louisiana is going to snap the ball here. And so that's the end of the first quarter. Raging Cajuns with a 7-0 lead trying to win the Sun Belt for the first time outright. They've got the Mountaineers 7-0 after one in Lafayette. You're watching the Sun Belt Championship on ESPN, presented by Papa John's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Well, let's just say we've had our fill of uh, Ooh, gumbo this weekend. Look at that. My goodness gracious. Make an old nose tackle hungry up here. The food in Lafayette has been off the charts. Had some shrimp and crab the other day. Man. Your intermittent fasting has been challenged this week. You mean not existent <laughs> this, this it's week. It's certainly intermittent. 
alleged 16 straight hours that eating that ended this week. <laughs> Flag down on the second and 11 play. Look at Neil Johnson, the tight end. Start. Offense, number 87, five yard penalty, second down. So far, they haven't been able to run the ball, but Levi Lewis has made some great plays on the run, throwing the ball, including on fourth down when he escaped to move the chains and ended up getting Louisiana into the end zone with a touchdown pass to Michael Jefferson. And again, not much success running the ball. It's second down and 16, gain of only about two for Chris Smith, brought down by Trey Cobb, second team all Sun Belt linebacker. Nice job by Trey Cobb, knifing underneath the blocker, making that play. And again, just App State forming a wall. Now, third and long situation. As a defensive guy, you have to be thinking in your pass rush, keep contained, stay wide. Don't let Levi Lewis, as he's done so many times, break, you know, break free, escape and then buy receivers time down the field. Might be offside here. There was some contact. You see the offensive line all standing still. One of the Appalachian State defenders was over the nose. They're claiming that uh, the center, Shane Velo, faked the snap. Marco Jackson, though, appeared to be in the neutral zone, and there was some contact. Like he contacted the helmet of the center. Number 52, the defense was feigning an act not related to football. It's a five yard penalty. Remains third down. Meaning mm. he was trying to jump the snap count? I thought that, that was I'm not a quite football play. Tom, any assistance with that call? I'm a little confused. It looked like to me like he was just trying to fake as if he was coming and back off. Well, yeah, he did. And when he backed off, the center flinched with the football. That's why App that, State yeah. thought, saw, thought they were going to have a penalty here. But I don't know. I'm still not sure what actually what foul he committed. Hmm. Another flag. This time, flag false play. start on the offense. Dante Fleming will head start false there. False start. Offense, number 17, five-yard penalty. Third down. All right, while we have a moment with all the penalties, let's uh, check out the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. So Levi Lewis came into today's game with over 8,700 passing yards in his career. That's second most. If you were listening earlier, you know the answer. I'm not sure Dusty or Tom were really paying much attention to what I was saying, so I don't know if they know What'd the you answer. say? Wh which Louisiana quarterback threw for more? Oh, sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> I wasn't listening. <laughs> I think Chris Berman would know this one pretty well. Terrence Mitchell or Jake DeLone? Coined a pretty good phrase back in the day, huh? There's Lewis on third down and 14, trying to add to that total. Steps up in trouble and sack at the 19 yard line. Jackson was back there, and so was Nick Hampton. Hampton got there first. When you're a pass rusher, you have to be relentless to the quarterback. Watch Nick Hampton coming off the edge. Going to be right here. Never stops going. He's an elite pass rusher. Already his second sack today. Opens up, comes off the tackle, continues to pursue Levi Lewis, and he gets him down for the second time here today. What a start for Nick Hampton in this pass rush for App State. Louisiana forced to punt. Malik Williams backing up, and he gets drilled at the 34-yard line by Percy Butler as we go to Matt Berry in the studio. Guys, happy championship Saturday. Time now for the Rocket Mortgage Studio Update. Houston drove down the first possession of the game, kicked the field goal. Here comes Cincinnati, Desmond Ritter to Tyler Scott. Kept it off an 82-yard drive. Bearcats up 7-3 over Houston in the American Championship. And it seems like what would be shocking at this point would be if Cincinnati wins and doesn't get in. We thought maybe a month ago that you know even if Cincinnati wins, they might need some help. But you know the committee has had them in the top four the last couple of weeks, and looks like they're in if they win. Win and you're in. 100% for Luke Fickle in Cincinnati. I'd love to see it. Play action pass here for Chase Bryce setting up. Everybody covered downfield, so Bryce leaves the pocket and throws it away. Chandler Manack had pressure that time. Their big win was at Notre Dame. They would obviously uh, 
break the ceiling and be the first group of five team to reach the college football playoff if they win today. And that win only got better throughout the season. Notre Dame currently six in the committee's rankings. Double digit road victory, a game that they led 17 0 and controlled the entire time. You know, I'd love to see them win today and get a chance to get in. Be great for the group of five to have some representation. I've always questioned would this committee put them in? And it's set up perfectly for Cincinnati this year. App State going to run the ball with Dietrich Harrington. No gain on the play. So he'll bring up third down and long. A little pushing and shoving afterwards. College football playoff selection show presented by AT&T 5G tomorrow. You'll be a part of the breakdown on ESPN tomorrow. As will Tom. Yep. Tom, myself, be on our shows all day on ESPN as the unveiling of the college football playoff and all the bowls. It'll be a lot of fun tomorrow on ESPN. It's going to be a fun day. App State 0 for 2 on third down so far. This is third and 10. Bryce throws complete but short of the line to gain is Malik Williams by about three yards. It's fourth down. We'll see what Sean Clark decides to do here. Well, he's already made his decision. He's going to punt. I think it's a no-brainer right here. Your defense has gotten a couple of stops in a row. Played the field position game. Pin them back potentially inside the 10 and allow that defense to pin their ears back, continue to create negative plays. I'm going to tell you what, Louisiana in coverage so far, stellar on that drive. Mountaineer wide receivers unable to get open. Xavier Sabach to punt, just gets rid of it again, has to kind of skip away from a Louisiana player trying to block the punt. This is an excellent kick. It rolls to a stop at the eight yard line. 50 yard punt, no return. Back to Lafayette on an 80 degree December day. All right, time to answer the Affleck trivia question. So Levi Lewis is number two all time at Louisiana in passing yards. Who is number one? Jake DeLome, who had a terrific career in the NFL. You got to do it in the Berman. Jake, daylight come, and you got a damn home. No? <laughs> okay. Say it with conviction, Dusty. I used to love that. I used to love that line from Berman. It was great, but is that is that what he said? I I don't think that that's the words of the song, though. That, that, that was is that the thing, correct though. lyric, though, of the song? Oh, I, I can't verify that. Rolling out is Lewis, throwing incomplete. Errol Rodgers, the intended receiver. Louisiana trying to win the Sun Belt Championship for the first time outright. App State trying to win it for the third straight year in which the game has been played. Did not happen last year because of COVID. See the numbers for Lewis so far. Senior from Baton Rouge. It's his 41st career start. He's behind DeLome, as we said, in passing yards, but he's ahead of him on the all-time touchdown passing list. He's got 73 now, including one today. Monty Bailey in the backfield, talented running back for this raging Cajun offense. Haven't seen much of him so far. Can really make defenders miss. He's a true freshman from Dallas who missed three games this year due to injury. Pass play, it's juggled but pulled in. And it was a first down by Meagel initially. And then he moves the pile all the way out to the 22-yard line. Well, Pierce Meagle does the dirty work, man. This guy's an outstanding blocker. Good job, concentration, catching that quick slant. And you see the toughness and the grit fighting to move the chains. Here's Rodgers getting the handoff. He's out to the 30-yard line. He, is, he gets absolutely hammered on the sideline by Ronald Clark lowering the boom. But Rodgers hops to his feet. And the 5'11", 180 pounder is OK. Nice job, Louisiana, getting out from inside the 10 yard line. Nice way to start this drive. Here's Bailey getting the kill. It's a keeper for Lewis after a great fake, and he picks up the first down. Boy, he, he's tough to find. He's so small, but he's so quick, too. Quality read as a defensive end charges down. And how about Levi Lewis in the open field? Man, puts that foot in the ground. Excellent short area quickness. So tough to tackle in open space. It almost looked like Ronald Clark, the defensive back, still thought that the running back had the ball and 
Levi Lewis, who was the ball carrier, was right in his front of him, right in front of his face. Here's back the throw, gets hit as he delivers, incomplete. Again, DeMarco Jackson in the face of the quarterback, and that definitely altered the throw. So not much offense since that first drive. We thought coming in we'd have a high-scoring game. Still could get there, but so far the defense has been pretty good. Well, these are the two best defenses in the Sun Belt. Louisiana from a scoring perspective, number one in the Sun Belt, and App State right behind them at number two. Total defense, App State is the leader in the clubhouse, so potent offenses, but also quality defenses on both sides. They shift Bailey into the backfield again. And he's got some running room, gets the first down before he's upended at the 44-yard line. Gain of 11, though, for Bailey. Really good block. 58, Osiris Torrance opens up that hole off the right side in the interior of the offensive line, and you see the explosiveness hitting it downhill by Amani Bailey. Really nice pick up there on the inside zone. His only offer coming out of Denton, Texas, was Northwestern State. Hmm. It's a good find by Billy, Billy Napier and his staff. Quality football player. Lewis keeping it here. He's got room inside the 40-yard line. He's going to outrun everybody. An easy touchdown for Levi Lewis once he got to the second level. And it's a 56-yard score. Fifth rushing touchdown this season for Levi Lewis. Man, is he electric. We, we saw him make some great plays with his arm, including a touchdown pass to Michael Jefferson on that first drive. And then he uses his legs a couple of times on this drive to make it 13-0. And Nate Snyder now adding on the extra point. Well, we've seen the escapability of Levi Lewis in the pass game. How about in the run game? Man, perfectly executed. Zone read keep. A nice block by Meagle. And it's Levi Lewis in the open field. It's all Cajuns here in Lafayette. The Sun Belt Championship on ESPN, presented by Papa John's, is brought to you by Cheez It, cheesy, crunchy satisfaction. And discover exceptionally common sense. We should do another athletic trivia question to see if anybody can guess of the players we just showed you who was a teammate of Dusty's at the Chicago Bears. Charles Peanut Tillman, man. We're not supposed to answer it. It was oh. going to see if Tom oh. could answer, but oh. go ahead. Now you got it. Peanut man, such a great guy, phenomenal football player, leader. He's an awesome person and coined the phrase the peanut punch. <laughs> you know, you see it during games. He used to walk around the halls and walk in the facility, knocking people's binders out of their hands. Like he worked it 24-7 all the time. Uh, one of my all-time favorite teammates and one of the greats from right here at Louisiana. 14-0, the Raysian Cajuns in front here in the Sun Belt Championship game. Here's Virgil on the return. He's got some room up the sideline. And look at the kicker making the tackle. Nate Snyder, not afraid, got in there, stuck his face in there and made the play. How about this? Virgil, one of the better return men in the country. He's got great speed. How about the end of this one? Look at Snyder come in here, stick his face in. Yeah, took the brunt of it, but he's there. And watch him give him the business at the end. Gets up and lets Virgil know, I'll be here all day. It's what it is, he said. When Snyder sees that on film, it may end up looking a little bit different than he remembers. Yeah. He made the tackle. He made the but tackle. That's all that matters. It is what it is. Yeah. First is. on the 39 for Appalachian State. They run Nate Noel up the middle for about four yards. Got to be able to establish this rushing attack, and this offense is so predicated on running the football and Tom off the run. That's where they max pro play action to take their shots. We haven't seen Chase Bryce connect on a shot down the field yet. We haven't, and keep in mind, Sutton number two, Hennigan number five, that's not their speed, guys. It's 14 in the slot to the bottom of the screen. They've got to get the ball into his hands in space. 
Noel gets the first down and out of bounds inside the 45 of the 42 yard line. Eight and a half to go here till halftime and a fresh set of downs in Louisiana territory for the Mountaineers. Good speed to the perimeter there by Nate Noel. Play action here for Bryce, setting up, throwing it downfield, incomplete. Inside the 15, he was going for Malik Williams. Good coverage by Brandon Bishop. And, and right there, Williams tried to, out of the slot, try to shake him with a double move. And it's a really quality job by Bishop by not biting, staying in good position, and not allowing that deep shot down the field. Kind of right on cue with what we talked about. They want to establish a run, get that outside zone going, play action off of it, and right on cue, they take their shot to Malik Williams. But this coverage down the field has been stellar so far for Patrick Tony in this defense. Bryce to the air again, and nearly intercepted. Big hit over the middle as Hennigan goes down. He took a shot from Cameron Solomon. And for number five, Thomas Hennigan. This pass got away from Chase Bryce. He's lucky that ball wasn't intercepted. It was right through the hands of Cameron Solomon. We hope Thomas Hennigan's okay as he took that shot. But man, defensively, Cameron Solomon had it right in his hands. He was looking to make a play on the receiver. He wasn't looking at the football. Appalachian State. Maybe in Fort on territory here. That's probably why they ran it, although they lose yardage. Peoples is dropped by Zion Hill, who's there again. Loss of a yard, it's fourth and 11. App State's going to have to punt here. Well, it's a great play there by Chauncey Manack. He comes underneath, and as you mentioned, Zion Hill, but how about the play selection there? A little bit surprising by Frank Ponce. But don't you think that was because they were planning going for it? They assumed they'd get three or four, and then they're in fourth and five or six? Possibly. I guess it's definitely possible, but instead it's a net loss of two, and you're putting again. And App State had no idea where that ball was. There was a Mountaineer down there, but it ends up going into the end zone. Matt Barry with your Mega Food Studio update. We are back and forth in the American. Here comes Houston Clayton tuned to Nathaniel Dell. Cougars grab a 10-7 lead, but here come the Bearcats. Jerome Ford, 79 yards for the score. Bearcats now back up on top. 14-10 in the American Championship. Here it's 14-0 Louisiana midway through the second quarter. And the Ragin' Cajuns back on the field on offense. Off play action, Lewis booting and throwing high. Incomplete going for Kyron Lacey. A little shaken up over there. Tonight on ABC, Pitt and Wake Forest meet in the Subway ACC Championship from Charlotte. Kenny Pickett and Sam Hartman, two excellent quarterbacks squaring off. That game will kick at 8 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. From Charlotte, North Carolina. Love championship Saturday, man. Got it kickstarted last night with a win by Utah and something to be said about winning your conference championships and the memories made by these teams that start with this as their goal in mind. Champions crowned here today. Run play and going to be another tackle for a loss for App State as Chris Smith is taken down. We touched on this at the top of the telecast. If you're a school like App State or Louisiana, yeah, bowl games are important, but it's really about the conference championship. And for some of the teams that are playing in title games today in the Power Five leagues, obviously you're still hoping to get to the college football playoff. But, you know, this is to be able to say your conference champion. App State's won six straight bowl games, but they talk more. In fact, they don't talk at all about that. They talk only about their conference titles. And Sean Clark told us, we expect to win championships at App State. And they have won four in a row, or had won four in a row until last year. But again, there was no championship game last year because of COVID. Lewis from the pocket, flips it downfield. It's caught. Jefferson, who had a touchdown catch in the first quarter, pulls that one in on third and 11 to move the chains. 
Lewis lost his helmet again. He's going to have to come out for a play. Trey Cobb with the hit. Well, how about the pocket presence we see there by Levi Lewis? Stands in there, takes the shot from Cobb, and delivers a strike in tight coverage to Michael Jefferson. What an unbelievable start in this game. Throwing it and running it for Levi Lewis. So Chandler Fields back on the field. It's the second time that Levi Lewis lost his helmet. The last time they had Fields throw the ball, he hands it off here, and there's nowhere to go for Chris Smith, leveled by Jordan Earl and Cobb at the line of scrimmage. Well, big 99 Jordan Earl is playing outstanding. Tom referenced him earlier, but really probably the most undervalued player on this App State defense. He's just sitting there eating up space on the interior. Good pressure from the inside on the throw game. And Louisiana inside has not been able to move him so far, having a huge impact early on in this ball game. Loss of one on the play. Another negative play against that App State defense. Second down and 11. And Lewis throwing it downfield behind the intended target. Kyron Lacey incomplete. It'll be third down and 11. DeMarco Jackson in the face of the quarterback. Yeah, DeMarco Jackson timed that blitz up perfectly. He was in the lap of Levi Lewis before he could really, before he could really diagnose anything down the field. And that's a key third down here. We've seen Louisiana so far in these third down situations have success. Levi Lewis has created, made plays. Can App State get off the field? to get their offensive ball back in a crucial spot. He just converted third down and 11 with a pass to Michael Jefferson. See how he does here. Four man rush by App State. Lewis dancing around and moving to his left. Looking downfield, throwing it. And a diving catch and then the ball comes out at the last second. Williams couldn't hang on. Incomplete pass. There is a penalty marker down in the backfield. This is fun to watch. Enjoyed looking at his tape, but man, I mean, just the guy buys himself so much time. He dropped a perfect pass drop down the field. The result of the play is an incomplete pass. They're in the play, holding, offense, number 67. That penalty is declined, results in fourth down. That was uh, Ken Marks holding on to Demetrius Taylor, who is one of the best sack men in the country. First team all Sun Belt pass rusher, but because of the incompletion downfield, they declined the penalty and it will be a punt on fourth and 11. Important stop for App State right there. And offensively, they have yet to be able to get anything going as this clock ticks down to just over five minutes. Important that App State gets something going and tries to get some points on the board. Hennigan backs up, makes the fair catch around the 25 yard line. So a big possession coming up for App State here in Lafayette, down 14 cents. Great guest list for the Mannings tonight. You reached Peyton and Eli, leave a message. What's up, Knuckleheads? It's Chuck. I'd love to do the show again and bring Shaq with me this time. Watch Peyton and Eli. You never know who dropped by. That's Monday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN2. And then Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick have the call on ESPN for Pat's Bills. Monday night football going to Orchard Park for just the second time since 2008. How about the pa Patriots? They've won six in a row. Mm. They haven't lost on the road. Bill Belichick guy can still coach a little, even without Tom Brady. Two timeouts. App State with the ball. Bryce in trouble, gets away. And Stumbles forward for about four yards. Been a struggle for Bryce here. The transfer from Clemson and then played last year at Duke. He's just two of six passing for eight, 18 yards. Got to try to find a way to get something going here and get a little momentum going into the locker room. Yeah, Dusty, I'm not so sure that right here, this isn't a good time for App State to do a little tempo. Speed things up a little bit. Get the ball out of Chase Bryce's hands. Even you're going to run the ball. Don't allow Louisiana to just sit back on their heels and be ready for what's coming. There's Peoples and grabbed at the ankles by Zion Hill at the 30-yard line, so a gain of a couple. Well, so far in this first half, Patrick Tony, defensive coordinator at Louisiana, he is pitching a perfect game. Currently, 
155 total yards for App State. And how about, they haven't allowed a third down this season against this offense. It's been a stellar performance across the board. Up front, back in, everything going right right here for Louisiana. Can Chase Bryce find an open target and move the chains for the first time on third down this season against this defense? He's in trouble, steps up, takes off, and gets it. There it is, across the 40-yard line. So he made two plays with his feet, avoiding a sack. And it's a gain of about six yards for a first down. And to your point, Tom, I'd love to see him right here after that first down, get on the football and go. Right. Right, right. Yeah. Because that's the thing with tempo. You kind of got to get a first down before you can get up in tempo, get the first down, yet here they huddle up. Going to take their time a little bit, but... And that was a crucial, crucial first down by Chase Bryce. Nice job avoiding the initial defender and fighting for that first down. Maybe they're not going Temple because they don't want Louisiana to get the ball again if they fail to move the chains here. Perhaps once they get to midfield, they'll do it. Here's a strike by Bryce delivered to Corey Sutton into Louisiana territory. Now let's see if they speed it up as they're at the 43-yard line. There's a run pass option here. You see Sutton at the top of your screen. Nice job getting inside of the Louisiana defender. Quality route run and the timing perfect there for Chase Bryce. Ball out of his hand right when Sutton makes his break. But Dusty, look at these Louisiana players. They're all looking to the sideline. If they just snapped the ball right now and ran a play, Louisiana wouldn't be ready. They got 16 yards on the last play. Play fake here for Bryce and the pass over the head of Corey Sutton. Not a good throw. Second down. Went right back to the exact same play. Trying to hit Sutton over the middle once again. And as you mentioned, pass sails on Chase Bryce. You'd love to see some type of points on the board if you're Sean Clark before halftime. Some type of positive momentum heading into the half. Half that's been somewhat dominated so far here by Louisiana. Points on the board, I think, just changes your overall mindset here in these final three minutes. And they have a good kicker, so can they move it about six or seven yards? They're going to keep it on the ground here with Peoples. And he's got the first down and more. He's inside the 20-yard line. He's heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Appalachian State. Cameron Peoples with his 14th rushing touchdown on the season, a 43-yarder. Well, it's a staple of what they do. Just a simple zone and a quality piece of running here by Peoples. I like his patience initially, makes the first defender he'll miss, and then it's off to the races. He gets to the edge, shows that breakaway speed, and takes it to the house and gets the Mountaineers on the board. Exactly what they needed to close out this first half, Dave. And Staten puts it through, so it's 14-7. App State finally on the board with 2.38 to go in the half. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Good turnout today here in Lafayette, Cajun Field for the Sun Belt Championship. But App State just cut the deficit in half. But Louisiana's offense will come back on the field, and App State really hadn't been able to stop Levi Lewis today. He's got 100 yards passing and almost 50 rushing and two touchdowns on the day. At Chase Price, third down pickup with his legs, Dave. Guy that's not very mobile. That was the key piece on that, their first third down conversion of the day. Extended the drive and set up a crucial touchdown run there by Cameron Peoples. Popped up into the field to play for Chris Smith from the six. And Matt at the 20 yard line. That's it. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. Okay, guys, coming up on the Alexis halftime report Alabama just struck from 67 yards. They're on the board against Georgia. We'll show you that. Plus, it was a game of one yard in the Big 12 championship game. We'll show you highlights. Plus, the Americans, Cincinnati and Houston, and a good one, Jesse Palmer. Joey Galloway, join me coming up on the Lexus halftime report. All right, talk to you guys at a few. 238 or 233 on the clock here, and Louisiana back 
on offense leading 14 7 after the App State touchdown. So from the 21 yard line we'll see what kind of play calling we get here. Got a run on first down Montrell Johnson picks up about a yard or two. So Billy Napier is his final game as the head coach here at Louisiana he starts his new gig at Florida tomorrow. How do you think he's going to do with the Gators. What did you think of the hire when you found out it was going to be Napier. I think it's a great hire. This was their target. They went after him. When you look at the job that he's done here over four years. It's been unbelievably impressive. When you look at his two stints under the great Nick Saban, he's been there with Dabo Sweeney. I mean, the pedigree is there. And what I like about him, he's a culture guy. And he's built a culture here, and he has a plan in place to build a similar culture in Gainesville. There's Lewis in trouble on second down and eight. Being chased by DeMarco Jackson has to throw it away. It'll be third down and long. And now App State a chance to get the ball back here with the clock stopped that they can come up with a third down stop here. We continue to see the aggressive calling of Dale Jones bring TD Roof there. I'll tell you what, you got to take proper angles against Levi Lewis. How many times have we seen guys come clean, can't get Levi Lewis down? Could have easily been a sack, but he's able to move around. Throw that ball out of bounds. I would expect pressure once again right over the ball to Marco Jackson. Well, you mentioned it during the break that he looks like an NFL player, just moving at a different speed than a lot of these other guys here today. They're worried about him right here, lining up over the ball. Lewis stepping up to run here, and he's cut down at the 26 yard line at a timeout called by Appalachian State. And there was DeMarco Jackson. Caden Smith, who had an Achilles injury seven months ago, but came back and was ready to go for the fall. He was also in there on the tackle. One timeout remaining now for the Mountaineers, who will get the ball back. Sunday at noon on ESPN, the final college football playoff rankings, plus the exclusive reveal of the New Year's Six Bowl games, including the Goodyear Cotton Bowl and the Capital One Orange Bowl. Those two national semifinal games will be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. College football playoff selection show presented by AT&T 5G. Tough to be bowl season, partner. Love it, man. Loved it as a player. Love it as a broadcaster. Especially last year. Think about it. Last year with, by the way, just this whole season with Full stadiums, field stormings. I mean, what a magical year it's been after such a tough year last season. But for the bowls, remember, a lot of those schools are flying day of. They didn't have all the bowl activities and festivities that a lot of these players will get to enjoy coming up this year. That really is such a reward for so many players at the end of a long, grueling season to make that bowl, enjoy it, and have a chance to win. I love it. Both these teams will be bowling. Reese Burns to punt here on fourth down. See what kind of field position App State gets here. Good punt. Malik Williams backing up. And he'll pick it up on one hop and then just goes to the ground at about the 19 yard line. 55 yard punt, no return. So last year's game, we talked about some of the issues with the, the Bulls. Last year's champ game was canceled because of COVID. App State won in 2018, beat Louisiana. Then again in 2019, was up big. Louisiana came back, still ended up uh, losing by seven. Talked about the cancellation a year ago is going to be Coastal Carolina and Louisiana, so they were declared co-champs. But here we are, 2021, here in Lafayette with the title at stake. And the Sun Belt, it's become a very quality lead. We saw Coastal's emergence last year, and they didn't take much of a step back. Louisiana, App State, clearly at the top of this league, but the Sun Belt really making moves in the landscape of college football. Bryce to throw on first down, got a defender at his feet. He finds a running lane, and he heads for... Out of bounds at about the 30 yard line, so it's a gain of 11 and a first down. Chase Bryce as a runner, a key factor here late in this second quarter before we go to break. Nice job looking down the field, recognizing a lot of green grass out in front and picking up a first down. You know what, Dusty? That's what he's done the best job of since the loss here in October is if it's not there, don't hold on to the ball and throw the ball up for grabs. Either throw it away or run, avoid the negative plays. Started every game. Tom at Duke last year was at Clemson for three years. Graduated from there in 2020. Got a throw here and dumps it off to Hennigan. 
inbounds. They have one timeout left, clock at 110 and counting, gain of seven on the play. Thomas Hennigan, well, he is App State through and through, making his 64th start today. That is a record in the FBS, just a key cog in this program. Louisiana bringing five. Bryce steps up to run, and he keeps going into Louisiana territory. Looks like a much more confident runner since he picked up that first first down. Gain of 15. I think it's coming back, though. Don't see a flag on the field, but the officials are huddled up. Holding. Offense. Number 51. John Kennedy. Second down. It's on the center. Bear Hunter. That is his name. Phenomenal name, by the way. All college football name team. And he's a heck of a player, too. Bear Hunter. Done a nice job holding it down the interior of that App State offensive line for a while. Previously a guard slid over to center. He is the leader, gets guys lined up, and solid player on the interior of that App State offensive line. Timeout, Louisiana. Their first charge timeout of the half. So Louisiana calls a timeout to talk some things over defensively. But to your point, Bear Hunter, I, he had to call his name there because of the uh, the penalty, but you're right. He's had an excellent year. They've got some really good players on that offensive line. Cooper Hodges at right tackle. Yep. And when they went on that run, they had that win over Coastal Carolina, which kind of changed their season. They won their last five games by 24 points or more, and they were favored coming into this game. And a big reason why is that offensive line at Bear Hunter. No question. He's been outstanding. And and not surprising, right, that a former offensive lineman for App State and Sean Clark has a really good offensive line to help lead this football team. And I got to tell you, talking with Sean Clark, there's not many coaches in college football that have as much pride at the job that they have as a head coach as Sean Clark. Talking with him this week, man, he loves App State. It means so much to him. And he says he has to pinch himself all the time that he's the head coach of his alma mater. Right, doesn't seem like a guy who's looking for the next job. He's happy and content where he is. They run the ball here and nowhere to go as Noel is dropped. Jordan Quibido makes the play. And so third down and a timeout called here by Louisiana. They want to get the ball back and have a little time. Third and 13 coming up. Over on ABC tonight, it's the Subway ACC Championship from Charlotte. Pitt number 15, Wake Forest ranked 16th. It's 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. We talked a lot about how well the quarterbacks have played this year. Last time uh, Pitt won a conference title was 2010. Wake Forest back in 2006. Uh, this should be a high scoring game. Good for Pat Narduzzi, Dave Clawson. Each of those coaches done a fantastic job this year leading their teams to this point. It's going to be a great game tonight. I cannot wait to watch. Be stellar quarterback play. I like Pitt in that game because I think the defense of Pitt, with the way they create negative plays, pressure the quarterback. I like their defense a little bit better. But man, it should be a good one for the ACC crown tonight. Meanwhile, third down and 13 here for Appalachian State, trailing 14 to 7. And they keep it on the ground and try to be conservative. And another tackle for a loss. Noel dropped by Manat. Fourth down. And Billy Napier uses his last timeout. Chauncey Manat. Excellent job disengaging the blocker, coming underneath. Getting the tackle for loss. Watch him right here. I want you to watch as he comes inside. Defensive lineman, use your hands. Engage, disengage, shed the block. And that's Cooper Hodges, a quality offensive tackle. But if you get your hands inside and you can own an offensive lineman, you can shed that block. Very well done there by Chauncey Manak, one of the best defensive edge players in the Sun Belt Conference. Either of you surprised at the approach right there from App State? I mean, you got a timeout. You had well over a minute. Feels like it's a bit of a reflection on them not maybe trusting Chase Price to be throwing the ball over the lot. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, they, they definitely, once they got behind the chains, it was over. They, they were in run mode right. and trying to just kick and get out of the half. Very conservative. You know what I like, though? I like the approach by Billy Napier on the flip side of that. That to be aggressive, we've got timeouts left. We're going to force them to punish the football, and we're going to try to score 
before the end of this half. A lot of coaches would allow that just to go to halftime up seven. Billy Napier says he wants more. Yeah, that punt, that snap skipped to Sabach on one hop. So it's a line drive kick and a good return out past the 45 to the 47 for Gare. So 32 seconds left. They don't have a great kicking situation. So you wonder how Billy Napier will handle the play calling here. But Levi Lewis has had a good day, got a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown. Their kicker, Nate Snyder, has got a 45-year field goal this year, but he's missed more field goal tries than he's made. By the way, uh, just saw it on the bottom line. I know that we're coming up to uh, Matt Berry at halftime. I'll have all the uh, highlights of the SEC championship, but Alabama has taken the lead 14-10 over wow. Georgia. Because look, I mean, long way to go. But if Alabama wins, both Alabama and Georgia are in. No doubt. I think Georgia is already punched their ticket to get in. We're just kind of waiting on everything else to fall out. But that would be uh, quite the statement for Nick Saban. He's able to take down Georgia today. Lewis back to throw, taking a shot downfield, and almost pulled in, but incomplete. Kyron Lacy had to adjust and. Not sure if he's banged up or frustrated with himself that he didn't catch the ball. Well, this is good positioning right here by Sean Jolly. Also, nice adjustment by Kyron Lacey, the six foot three wide receiver. He's got size over him, unable to hold that pass in. See him on the sidelines, shaking up a little bit, but good coverage, good adjustment by Lacey, and missed opportunity down the field to put Louisiana in prime real estate. No timeouts left for Louisiana. Another deep ball, and this time it's pulled in by LeBlanc. Inbounds at the 24-yard line. And Louisiana now in business, 28-yard play. And Sean Jolly never got his head around. Peter LeBlanc just going to go a go route as he turns around, and Jolly never got that head around, just tried to read the eyes of the receiver. And good concentration on the sidelines by Peter LeBlanc. The exact same yard line as the one that was dropped on the play before. Six foot three receiver on a five nine corner. That's what it feels like, Tom, taking advantage of the lack of size of Jolly. Yep. On the outside. See if we get a shot to the end zone here. Floating it downfield, and it's incomplete, thrown out of bounds. LeBlanc, the intended target. Madison Cohn had good coverage. 15 seconds left. Be about a. 41 yard field goal for Nate Snyder from here. No timeouts again for the Raging Cajuns. And if you're Louisiana, you do not want to get tackled inbound short of the first down marker, right? No timeouts left. That clock's going to roll. That's why we're seeing Levi Lewis take his shots down the field right near the sideline. Got to throw something on the perimeter or at the sticks where you can get up and spike it and have another play. Pressure coming up the middle. Lewis gets it away. And it's caught by Bailey out of bounds after a gain of about three. 12 seconds to go. It will be third down. They get no timeouts. If you get a first down, the clock would stop if it's in the field of play to move the chains. Then you could go up there and spike it, take one or two more shots of the end zone. Down here. Free play offside. Ball thrown out of bounds by Lewis. So that costs you time, though. You get the free play, but it costs you six seconds. Offside. Defense, number 31, in the neutral zone at the time of the snap. Five yard penalty, third down. Now do you have to go for the field goal? Yep. If you're going Napier? To. Yeah. We'll send in Nate Snyder. So it'll be about a 33 or 34 yard try for Snyder, who's three for eight on the season. I'd almost rather if there had been some contact on that offside, so they had to blow it dead, right? Exactly. No question. Free play worked against them. And App State had one timeout left, used it. Kick was good. Obviously, doesn't matter, but 
timeout, Appalachian State. Wanted to note it when he got a guy that's three of eight. Mentioned that he made a kick, even though it didn't count. Sun Belt Championship game for uh, Louisiana with a seven point lead. App State won the first eight meetings, but Louisiana's won the last two and a 41 13 win earlier this season. They played in the 2018 and 2019 Sun Belt title games, and then last year COVID wiped out what would have been a Louisiana Coastal Carolina championship meeting. Got a little bit of a rivalry on our hands now between App State and Louisiana. All the meetings they've had over the last four seasons. As both coaches told us throughout the course of the week, they know each other very, very well. Players know one another, coaching staff, schemes. And the way these teams are built, they're very similar. Like, schematically, it's a little different, but they go about their business in a very similar way. They will also share the same tunnel as they run back to the locker room. It's right there behind the goalposts. 33-yard try to get some points here at the end of the half. And this one hooks to the left, but is good. A flag is down, but because it was good, Demetrius Taylor's offside penalty will be declined. The result of the kick is good. Offside, defense, number 97. That penalty's declined. So it's 17-7, Louisiana with a second to go in the half. See Taylor get off the football a little bit prematurely on the inside. Nice first half for Nate Snyder. Knocks his field goal through. Nice tackle on the kickoff. Well, if you call it a tackle, <laughs> being tackled, whatever. Got the ball carrier down. But the way this game is going, that that's a big yes. score there at the end of the half. No question. I go back to just Billy Napier using those timeouts, you know, forcing the hand of, of App State and Sean Clark. And as Tom mentioned, very conservative play calling there from the offensive coordinator, Frank Ponce. And the Raging Cajuns with another minute to go. They get the ball back, move it down off their big shot. And they cash in and put up three before we go to break. That's an outstanding job utilizing the entire 30 minutes and especially those final two minutes to your advantage and getting points on the board. It's a big deal, Dusty, when you go into that last minute, you've got all three timeouts. You've been managing the game very, very well. No doubt. Totally agree. Totally agree. It's good coaching. And a squib kick. He scooped up and App State just content to take a knee and go to the locker room. Louisiana trying to win the Sun Belt Championship outright for the first time with a 10 point lead as we get you to the studio for the Lexus Halftime Report. Guys, thank you. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. You're watching the Sun Belt Championship on ESPN presented by Papa John's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Live from Cajun Field in Lafayette, Louisiana leads Appalachian State 17 to seven as we get ready to start the third quarter. Brilliant first half for Cajun quarterback Levi Lewis. He had a rushing touchdown there and also a passing touchdown. The defense for Louisiana was equally good with a couple of sacks and three tackles for a loss. Appalachian State's defense kept it from getting blown out in that first half with three sacks and six tackles for a loss. A last second field goal by Louisiana makes it a 10 point game and our first half stats are brought to you by PlayStation. Passing yards for Louisiana 142 Chase Bryce struggled throwing the ball for App State he did run the ball a little bit pick up a first down and get them into a situation where they could get a touchdown their only score of the game. App State will start on offense. Virgil is deep. Nate Snyder will kick off. Louisiana seeking its first outright Sun Belt title. App State won four straight, 16 through 19, and then COVID wiped out last year's title game. So Coastal Carolina and Louisiana, based on regular season records, were declared co champs. Yeah. 
in the field of play. Here's Virgil from the four yard line. And he's up to about the 24 and stopped there. And a little shoving, extracurricular activity. Richard but no flags. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, and Tom Luganville. Boy, you wouldn't know the way Louisiana played in that first half, the way they came out, Dusty, that you have a coaching change. Billy Napier leaving tomorrow to go to Florida, but sticking around. But you can see why the players love them the way they do. Prepared, focused, and ready to play. And you never know with a coaching change what's going on in the mind of these players' heads throughout the course of the week. As Billy Napier told us, had a great week of preparation, and man, did it show in that first half. Both sides of the football dialed in and ready to go for a conference championship game. And we talked about this at the outset of the telecast. For these players, they're not going to the college football playoff. Many of them are not going to the NFL. It's about winning this game as we check in with Tom down on the field. We've got an opportunity to talk with both coaches. Billy Napier, very pleased with his team's handling of the second quarter and the clock management at the end. Says they've really got to do a better job of trying to hold down Chase Bryce when he sees man defense and he takes off and run. But for Sean Clark, this is a this is a guy right now as a coach that feels good about his football team. Dusty, you and I talked about them going a little bit more up tempo. They'd like to, but they got to get ahead of the chains on first and second down. That's been problematic for them. And then on a defensive end, Jones, the corner, number six. What is he? Does he second in the country in interceptions, correct? Battling the flu, they had to hold him out much of that second quarter just to give him a little bit of a blow. And Tommy talked about getting behind the chains in offense. They get a chop block penalty there on that last play. So that's why they're in first down at 22 on their 12 yard line. Temperature in the upper 70s here in early December in Louisiana. Rice off a play action pass, throws a strike to Sutton. And he's able to break a tackle, kind of a weak attempt that time by Makai Garner. And another flag comes down. It's a late flag. There's actually two of them down now. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 10. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. It's on Andre Jones. Well, this half started with some chippiness off of the opening kickoff and now it's carrying over onto the defense for Louisiana. I'll tell you what excellent protection there by App State up front. Plenty of time for Chase Bryce to stand tall in the pocket. He locates his favorite target Corey Sutton on the in cutting dig. Nice throw and then you tack on the yards after. It's a big time play right there for App State. So they get back to hole here first down and 10. Bryce to throw and down the middle of the field incomplete nobody home. Not sure who the intended target was there was a receiver about 15 yards underneath and another about 15 yards downfield. I'll tell you what Chase Bryce takes a shot here you'll see for Rod Gardner come in late as Noel doesn't pick him up big Whoa. hit on the quarterback he could have easily drawn a flag. Usually if he takes more than two steps the flag is automatically out you saw in the shot there the referee Kyle Olson was right there. Very rare we don't see quarterbacks protected at any level of football in 2021. Instead it's second down at 10 Nate Noel is over a thousand yards rushing on the season Been quiet so far gets a carry here and not much maybe three brought down by Farad Gardner. So third down coming up. This has been a problematic down for App State all season against this Louisiana football team. And they've had third and long and another third and at least seemingly manageable situation here with third and six. Just one for six on the day on third down. Bryce finds Hennigan for a first down catch. He goes to his most reliable target on the team, the all time leader in catches at Appalachian State, Thomas Hennigan. He's hurt on the play. It's such a stellar career at App State, and you mentioned it reliable, excellent hands, and in a key third down situation here to start this second half. Go to old reliable. Good connection there from Bryce to Hennigan to move the chains. Nobody has started more games 
in FBS history than Thomas Hennigan. 64. Back to the ground, and Noel trying to bust it to the outside. And he's down for a loss at the 50-yard line. Eventually brought down by Camp Pedesclo, but there are others initially started by Talon Humphrey on the nose. And Talon Humphrey, he has been a force inside. Six you see that, Dusty? Yeah, six <laughs> foot five. Six four, 350 pounds of them lining up at nose tackle for Louisiana. Bryce setting up in the pocket, steps up, takes off, and to the 45 yard line. He's done that several times and gotten positive yardage. They'll be in that third, six, or seven range here once again. It's one thing we've seen here today when his initial read isn't there, tucking it and getting what he can get, and it's paid dividends so far in this ball game. Chase Bryce picking up quality yardage whenever he decides to tuck it and go. Once again, third and long. Can't seem to get ahead of the chains on first and second down. Really tough for App State on offense today. Bryce with time. And nice catch by Hannigan with the defender. Pedeslo all over him. It's right at the line to gain. And it is a first down at the 39-yard line. Hennigan playing hurt, comes up with a big play. How about the strong hands here by Thomas Hennigan? This is tight coverage, good ball placement from Chase Bryce. He's got Pedesco hanging all over him. But Thomas Hennigan with his second down reception to move the chains of this drive. Good strong hands, and he is not feeling well. But a big-time catch to keep this drive alive. They get the big rack Cameron Peoples in, but they fake it to him. And now a deep throw downfield into the end zone. Incomplete. It came out at the last second as Corey Sutton was trying to pull it in. With well, Eric Gehr all over him. And Sutton is still down. Well, Gehr just at five foot nine. It's a six foot three. Corey Sutton just a go round. Put the ball up and let your bigger target go try to make a play. And it's a nice job by Guerrero continuing to fight. Look at him kind of pull that ball away as they go to the ground. So they continue to look at Corey Sutton. This would be a big loss. Their leading receiver in terms of yards this season. Corey Sutton injured on a play where it was awfully close to whether he actually had possession when he went out of bounds and then at the end once he had secured it and survived the ground the ball came out but it, it I think it's hard to overturn this because the ball is knocked out he doesn't survive the ground the question is when great look at that right there it's an excellent individual effort by Sutton going Randy Moss up and over trying to bring it in but as you mentioned does not survive the ground that was extremely close and good for Eric Garrett to stay with the play all the way to the very end. So second and ten back to the ground game. Here's Noel almost got through that hole at the thirty five yard line tripped up by Gidry and now an injured Louisiana defender. It's Gidry who made the tackle. Looking at the left leg of Tyler Gidry, sophomore from Baton Rouge, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away from Lafayette. Good crowd here today supporting the Raging Cajuns. First time they've hosted this championship game. Great following here for this football team, especially since Billy Napier has taken over and had all the success. All right, while well, we have a moment, the college football playoff rankings brought to you by AT&T 5G. So Alabama's up on Georgia. And look at Cincinnati, Houston, a one-point game. So you're crossing. It's a cross out there. Is that what you're doing? You're Xing out Oklahoma State? They're gone. I'll tell you a team to watch for. Baylor, how far can they move up at nine? Notre Dame's got to love what they saw with 
Oklahoma State going down earlier today. Cincinnati's in a dogfight right now with Houston. Georgia loses. This is. Should we have expected anything less as crazy as this season's been? Nope. For not to go a similar way here on championship weekend. They're still looking at Tyler Guidry, so we're going to have to step away, but we'll talk more about the college football playoff rankings as we go along here from Lafayette. So the athletic director here at Appalachian is Brian, or at Louisiana rather, is Brian Maggard, and, and to Brian's left is his wife Carrie, who was diagnosed with breast cancer in the fall of 2018, but has been cancer-free since 2019. There she is, taken in today's game. Her son Dalton and daughter Aubrey also in attendance today. Of course, it's V Week at ESPN, and our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. And a big shout out to Dick Vitale, who yeah. continues to inspire all of us. He has been on social media very active, showing everybody what he's going through and how he's fighting it. Still out there helping promote the V Foundation, raising awareness, and, and, and part of million dollars in investment to try to stop this disease as Corey Sutton is injured again. He got hurt on that long pass, and it's fourth down and six. Dick Vitale been a true inspiration. As we saw there on a key third down, Chase Bryce unable to connect once again. Pass thrown high. And too far in front of his intended target, Corey Sutton. And keep an eye on him down there, Tom. Corey Sutton just hobbled off the field. And I agree with this call yeah. here. Down 10 at the 35. It's this is go for it type of territory to start the second half. You have no choice. Play 11 of the drive, fourth down and six. Bryce steps up. Makes a nice move and picks up the first down. He's done that several times today with his legs. He's been better running than he has been throwing. It's been a crucial piece of today's offense. Second, third down, he's picked up. How about the move he puts on Andre Jones? A little shake and bake there for the quarterback, Chase Bryce, who typically, when you're talking about Chase Bryce, you can talk about arm strength, deep shots, not typically his mobility, and especially not breaking people down in the open field, but sometimes you got to do whatever it takes. Big time pickup on fourth down. The five minute drive to start the third quarter. Louisiana hasn't had the ball yet. Bryce to throw and again takes off inside the 20 yard line. He lost the ball and it's recovered by Louisiana. It's picked up by Butler. And out of bounds and then an official gets hit late. Farad Gardner chopped it out and scooped up by Butler. We'll see if the quarterback Bryce was down, plus there's some extracurriculars again. All right, here we go, Farad Gardner from the back. Outstanding individual effort. Is he down? But looks, like, looks like he might be down. As he comes over the top, rips at this football, does it start to move before he hits the ground? Ruling on the field is a fumble. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. That play is under video review. They'll come back and sort it out. Right now it's a turnover. Louisiana ball. So the ruling of a fumble has been overturned by replay. You, you called it right away. You said that uh, Chase Bryce was down. Well, it's a great job by Gardner coming in. You see him rip at the ball, but he's got control. Knees down here. Okay, he still has possession. It's this final rip by Gardner at the very end when the ball actually comes loose right there. See how his hand flips up? Then the ball comes out. Nice job by the replay booth getting that call right. Would have been a crucial fumble in this ballgame. Instead, it's second down and one after the nine yard gain. Peoples wrapped up by Humphrey and tackled. Where is forward progress? It's still short of the line to gain, so it's third down. Boy, big Taylor Humphrey, call him Big Sauce. He's 6'5, 350. He's been owning the interior of the defensive line this ballgame. This is a guy I think has legitimate NFL potential. 
when you look at his size, carries that 350 well. He's been putting on a clinic on the interior of that defensive line here in this ballgame. I got to think up the middle with Peoples here. And Peoples is hit by Humphrey and didn't get it. In fact, he might have lost a yard. We'll see if App State goes for it on fourth down. You've got the points here probably. Your kicker Chandler State is one of the best in the country. He's 18 of 19 on the year, and that's why they're going to bring him out here. Get it back to a one score I game. I agree with the call to go ahead and take the points. But man, what an individual effort on back-to-back -back plays. Taylor Humphrey, a quick swim of the guard in the backfield. Big time play by a big man. He is a load, dude. Oh, man. And I think with that being a seven minute drive, this is the right call here. Make sure you get something out of it. And they do. Chandler State now 19 of 20. He is the active leading scorer in all of FBS. And it's back to a seven point game. 36 yard. Field goal good from State. Got the ACC championship coming up next from Charlotte on ABC. Pitt Wake Forest. Talked about that game a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially if you like offense. Good quarterback play. Both should be on display here tonight. That's a good quality drive for Sean Clark's football team coming out of the half. And again, I think the bigger thing for me. They converted on multiple third downs, got the fourth down. That's something that they've really struggled with the first six quarters this season against Louisiana. So signs of moving in the right direction. One thing, I'll, Tom, if you could take a look, a couple of receivers banged up there. We saw both Thomas Hennigan and Corey Sutton go down in that drive. Right. So we talked about from the onset this excellent wide receiver for this veteran group. Two of those key cogs left the game during that drive. Michael Hughes will kick it deep for Appalachian State. Chris Smith running it out. And he's brought down well short of the 20 yard line. Time for today's powerful plays brought to you by Duracell. And the defense for Louisiana doing a really good job up front. He's been tough, rugged. Talked about him a bunch today, getting off the field in crucial situations. How about the big third down stop there? Taylor Humphrey making his presence felt. Two sacks, four tackles for a loss today. First down to the 18 yard line. Play action for Levi Lewis, rolling out. And throwing it over the middle incomplete. He was going for his tight end Hunter Bergeron. It's really good coverage by Trey Cobb on Bergeron. Also, I thought an outstanding job by Demetrius Taylor. As he's coming up on his rush, he contacts and avoids the check down for Levi Lewis. And Lewis off target with the tight coverage down the field. There's Bailey getting the carry on second down. Nice cut back. And he has a first down before he shoved out a play by Caleb Sperlin. But Amani Bailey, true freshman, who missed three games with a knee injury this year, getting it done again. Good job off the right side, following big Max Mitchell. And he's able to get to the perimeter. Good cut. I'm a big fan of Amani Bailey. He's got speed, power, and the ability to make the initial defender miss. From the 33 yard line back to Bailey running room again and close to a first down right at the marker at the 43 yard line before he's dragged down by DeMarco Jackson. The quality cut back there right off his center Shane Vallow just hitting that thing downhill at full speed. 10 8 6 hundred meter runner back in high school. Strong start to the second half for him on the ground. No dust you think about a guy like Bailey and the caliber of player that a Louisiana has access to. There's way more guys like him than there are four and five star players. Great job evaluating 
by Billy Napier with Bailey. Yeah, Northwestern State was the only school looking at him initially when he was coming out of Denton, Texas. Fresh set of downs. Bailey again, this time running to the left. And he picks up about three yards before he's tackled by Cobb. This is who this Louisiana offense wants to be. Want to establish a line of scrimmage. Arguably the best offensive line in the Sun Belt Conference. Want to run the football, get in front of the chains, and set up manageable situations for Levi Lewis. I'm surprised with all the man defense, Dusty, that App has played today. They haven't run the quarterback a little bit more. There's nobody to account for him. He's back to throw here, looking downfield, taking a shot. Got a man, but he overthrows him, and it's nearly intercepted. Stephen Jones, who's back out there after getting banged up earlier, dove for a pass that was well over the head of the receiver, Kyron Lacey. Good to see Stephen Jones back on the field. I'm surprised we didn't see him much in the first half, but hydrated back out there. And this is a guy who's tied for the lead in the FBS with five picks. Three of those interceptions he's taken to the house. A ball hawk and a playmaker for this App State defense as he checks out third down there was another receiver too that was wide open mm -hmm. ball was not thrown that way it was Errol Rogers but pass was not intended for him third down and seven here and that pass is tipped and then it's caught by Bailey on the redirection what a heads up play and a first down of the 41 of App State a gain of 14. Wow, outstanding job by Monty Bailey. This could have been disaster. Ball's up in the air. It's anybody's football. And Amani Bailey locates the ball and brings it in to move the chains on third down. Big time heads up play by Bailey. Pass to the sideline is off the mark, intended for Lacey, incomplete. The concentration and awareness right there, Dave. Done or not? None or not? You could have made that play, right? Yeah, with one hand, sure. No doubt. <laughs> I mean, look at this here. He goes with the one hand with, wow. with the right arm and then secures it with the left arm to keep this drive alive. A real important drive if they're able to get points out of it, given how few possessions we've had in this game. He's getting the bulk of the work here, Amani Bailey, on this drive. But look at this App State defense around the line of scrimmage. Holy cow, look at that. They run Bailey, able to find some room. And he stumbles inside the 30, still gets a first down, though, and a gain of 13. Down to the 28. It's excellent patience there from Imani Bailey. They're going to pull backside tackle Max Mitchell to help pay that path. Just a simple counter play, but it was the patience allowing the blocks to set up. As I mentioned, App State was loaded right there at the line of scrimmage, but Bailey waited. The blocks were there, and a nice hole and good pickup. They've been riding Bailey on this drive. Let's see if they give it to him again here inside the 30-yard line. This is a team in Louisiana that rushed for 246 yards and a win over Appalachian State during the regular season. That's why this game is being played in Louisiana instead of Boone. Bailey grounded by Roof at the 23. So a gain of five. That's probably the best job they've done on Bailey tackling him anyway on this possession. Now he'll go to the sideline and Montreal Johnson will come in here and get a couple reps. Montreal Johnson having a fantastic freshman season in his own right. 11 touchdowns on the year. He's another physical back. He's the biggest of these three backs for Louisiana you're going to see. Played 10 and a half minutes. We've only had two possessions. Each team's had the ball once here in the third quarter. Here's a dump off pass that's caught. But a nice tackle on Rodgers that time at the 21 yard line. Caden Smith coming up from that safety position. You talked about it earlier in Achilles back in April. Missed early on in the season, but to see him back out here, such a key cog in this defense. Put together a great letter half the season. Quality open field tackle there on Errol Rodgers. Four minutes to go on the third, 11th play of the drive coming up. Appalachian State had a six minute drive to start the game or start the quarter anyway. Maybe a little zone read here with the ball potentially in Levi Lewis's hands. Nope, Lewis hands it off. Johnson 
Not going to get it. It'll be fourth down. And keep in mind, their kicking situation is not solid. Nate Snyder's four for nine on the year. He made a 33-yarder earlier. This would be about a 37 or 38-yard try for Billy Napier. And his final game as the Louisiana head coach for before taking over at Florida tomorrow. He's going for it. What do you think? Look, if you trust your kicker, I think you kick it and take the points and make it a two-score game. If you don't trust your kicker, I say you trust your offensive line and you roll the dice and you go for it here. Why kickers can be such a key component, Dave, for a head coach in situations like this. You don't get it. App State takes over. Still down a possession after Louisiana chewed up about six minutes off the clock. Came away with nothing. That's if they don't get it. Fourth and two. Are they going to just try to draw them offside? No, they snap it and they run it and nowhere to go. Johnson did not get it. Wasn't even close. Appalachian State takes over on downs. It's DeMarco Jackson, the big time linebacker, making the play. But DeMarco Jackson is something else. Been so productive all season, and nothing has changed here today. Watch him just fly downhill as he's going to be on a blitz. Ball snapped, he's coming downhill, fights through the block, and still gets to the ankles of the ball carrier, Montrell Johnson. He fought through that block of Osiris Terrence. He's 335, 340 pounds, yet still finds a way to get in the backfield and get a big TFL and get his offensive ball back down a score. Huge stop for App State. You look across NFL rosters, there are plenty of guys like DeMarco Jackson that played at a group of five school that are starters. And clearly just watching him today, he's got a future to play on Sunday. Back to throw goes Bryce looking deep and the ball is well overthrown. Nowhere near the intended target. Christian Wells incomplete. You can appreciate the aggressiveness. You know, it's a team that prides itself, play action, max protecting, taking their shots, but nothing there. Well covered by Louisiana down the field. Safety help over the top, and Eric Guerra running stride for stride with the intended target. Yeah, and Dusty, I'll tell you, he got greedy right there because he had his tight end, number, number 88, Henry Pearson, leaking out wide open. All he had to do was dump it underneath. So second down and 10. Bryce to the air again. And his arm was hit that time as he was trying to dump it off to Daedric Harrington, third down and 10. Uh, one good sign for App State. I do see Thomas Hennigan back in the game. He had left the previous drive. In fact, he was banged up. He's back. He third down target for this offense. Have not seen Corey Sutton come back in. Yeah, Dusty, they took him into the locker room with what looks to be a right arm injury that did occur on that catch and fumble in the end zone two series ago. That's for Hennigan in the slot up top. So that's a big loss in for App State. We might use him here on third down and 10. Bryce in trouble, gets rid of the ball at the last second as he was being taken down by Andre Jones and Bryce slow to get up. There's a penalty marker down. Let's see what they call here. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket and threw it beyond the line of scrimmage. During the play, holding offense number 51. Decline. Result of play is fourth down. All right, so they decline the holding call against Bear Hunter. It's a really good rush by Andre Jones. Bottom of your screen comes inside to tackle Cooper Hodges. Quality job using his hands. And clearly Chase Bryce outside the tackle box when he delivers that pass. Nice job on third down, pinning your ears back and getting after the quarterback and forcing the punt. Xavier Sabach will boot it away from the 10 yard line and it's a poor punt. And wow, electing to field it at the 39 yard line was Eric Gare. 41 yard punt, short return. Here's Matt Berry. All right guys, American Championship game, Cincinnati and Houston. Joel DeBlanco here picks off Clayton Toon and the Bearcats are in business here. Desmond Ritter to Alec Pierce. 
Separation for the Bearcats now 28-13 midway through the third. Wow. So that changed quickly. Bearcats are a good football team, man. Luke Fickle's a heck of a coach. And if they hold on, they're punching their ticket. What if Alabama holds on? That <laughs> makes things really interesting. As they clearly would have two teams from the SEC. Here's a wide receiver screen to LeBlanc. That was red well. Great play by Sean Jolly. Making the tackle after a gain of one. Oh, that's an outstanding play by Sean Jolly. Wide perimeter screen, cornerback. Jolly uses his hands, sheds the block, keeps contained, that outside shoulder free, makes the tackle. Quality individual effort. Louisiana trying to win the Sun Belt Championship outright for the first time. Co-champs last year, but there was no championship game. Lewis in trouble, can't escape, down he goes. Big Demetrius Taylor out of Miami. Penalty marker down though, was there a face mask foul on Taylor as the helmet came off. And that would, Lewis is coming to the sideline, but if that's a penalty on Taylor, Lewis can go back in. They're rolling it. Who has an excellent job rushing the passer by Demetrius Taylor. Watch the long arm he uses on the offensive tackle. Out of your screen there, big time rush. They picked up the flag then because there's no face mask penalty. So Lewis has got to come out. This is huge with Chandler Fields, the backup in there for a big third down and 15. Swing pass, dangerous throw with Jolly closing on LeBlanc. Incomplete, and Louisiana will have to punt. Sean Jolly made two great plays on that possession. Excellent anticipation. Watch him just read it and go. Right now, he recognizes blocking. He knows he's going to get that screen on the outside. A couple of quality plays on the perimeter by one of the better corners in all the Sun Belt Conference, Sean Jolly. They were picking on him in the first half, taking deep shots. He was not going to be had on the perimeter on that series. Reese Burns on to punt. Malik Williams is deep. And there's some contact, and here comes a flag. Fair catch made at the 23 yard line. Was it running into or roughing on Eli Wilson of Appalachian State? Did he hit the plant leg? It's fourth and 15, so if it's a five yard penalty, would not be obviously a first down. If you hit the kicking leg, a lot of times they'll just call it running into. If you hit the plant leg, then it's usually you're going to get the roughing call. Running into the kicker, defense, the penalties decline. First down, Appalachian State. Take a look here, Dave. You're about as good on the rules as anybody I know. Take a look. I think that's just running into. Oh, he hit the plant leg, though. I mean, he's in the air and watch that left leg, which is plant leg. There is some contact. And well, I tell you what, the head coach Sean Clark, he was not happy with Wilson. So I'm sure he would prefer him just to stay away. So another chance here for Appalachian State. Louisiana stopped on downs inside the 25 and then had to punt from near midfield. 1.16 to go in the third quarter. Top two teams in the Sun Belt. Winners of their respective divisions scoring off here in Lafayette. And a run play, Noel straight ahead. Stacked up by Lorenzo McCaskill after a gain of four at the 26 yard line. App State has had so much success over the course of its history going back to FCS with three national titles. Farad Garner shaken up. Starting linebacker for Lafayette. App State went to the FBS level just seven years ago and they've had not national championship success obviously but they've been great in their own conference four Sun Belt titles during that span six consecutive bowl wins. Only teams to meet in on field championships with uh, last year's game being canceled because of COVID. You got two coaches who've been very successful. Billy Napier getting rewarded by getting the Florida job, which he'll start tomorrow. Sean Clark, who's a guy that's been in App State as a player and an assistant now in year two as the head coach. Both extremely successful. Sean Clark 20 and 5 here as the head coach. And how about Billy Napier? 
over the last three seasons 32 and 5 running this Louisiana program. Just really impressed talking with him yesterday. He's he's upbeat. You could tell there's an excitement about finishing this season with this team and also an excitement about what the future holds in Gainesville Florida. And you can tell how emotional he was too guys you yeah. know talking about his players what they built you know yeah. this program and it was neat to see a smile on his face but you know there was some sorrow there too. And, and an understanding that the job isn't finished right right that this game here tonight this afternoon at home was a key piece in him wanting to leave the right way. And he told us yesterday look uh, initially there's going to be a few people that come with me but we're, we're going to let kind of things play out over the next few weeks with the signing period and then we'll bring some more. He did not want to name names. He said there's still an evaluation process going on in terms of who's going to go with him to Florida as Noel is knocked down after a gain of one. That was second down and six. So it'll be third down at about five in the final minute here of the third quarter. Last possession App State was able to step up convert on a couple of these third medium situations. I believe both of those third downs were caught by five Thomas Hennigan who was back in the ball game. I have to think that Chase Bryce might be looking that way. Mr. Reliable you need a reliable wide receiver in this spot top of your screen. Play clock at one they get the play off. Bryce there's some pressure on him nobody near the ball there McCaskill had pressure that's the end of the quarter for now unless they decide to throw a flag for grounding there was nobody over there in a white jersey there is a conversation going on okay so they said he was outside the pocket I'm not sure about that but that is the end of the third quarter. Three quarters in the books in the Sun Belt Championship. Louisiana trying to close it out and win the Sun Belt outright for the first time. Fourth quarter is next from Lafayette. You're watching the Sun Belt Championship on ESPN, presented by Papa John's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Louisiana in front, 17 to 10, as we start the fourth quarter. Appalachian State with possession, but a fourth down, so punt coming up here. Sabach kicking it deep to Gare, who fills it on the 30 yard line, dancing around, it goes down back at the 28. Here's Matt Berry in the studio. Guys, we have a developing situation in Atlanta for the top-ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Watch this throw from Bryce Young to Jamison Williams. A 55-yard strike. It is all tied 31-17. When he said all tied, I thought he meant the score was tied. He had me think because I, <laughs> I saw 31-17, so Matt got me a little bit. That, wow, did Georgia score two touchdowns quick, but... Did you just say you think Bryce Young has got the Heisman? I think he's won it. He's already at four total touchdowns, 390 total yards. I mean, against that defense, are you kidding me? What a what a performance. And they're just getting started in the second half. Bryce Young, go ahead and strike a pose. I think he's taken down the trophy after this performance against Georgia. Bailey's had the hot hand at running back. Good play by Trey Cobb to get off the block and take him down after a gain of two. These are the stats entering the week for Heisman candidates. I find it really hard to see Hutchinson win it just because we haven't had a defensive player. Charles Woodson doesn't count because it was more Correct. than just defense. I, I'll tell you, um, I would have, uh, you know, Kenny Pickett in that conversation as well. And he's going to have an opportunity tonight, but with what Bryce Young has done against that defense, he had the biggest opportunity on the biggest stage and man I don't even know if it matters how that thing finishes just the way he's been able to shred that defense so far incredible well, and what happens if Georgia comes back to win does Alabama still get in with two losses here's a deep ball thrown into traffic over the head of Dante Fleming it'll bring up third down and long you think Alabama's in regardless now because of what they've done so far if Georgia come back comes back and wins is it uh, is it enough for Bama to get in with two losses? It helps their cause with Oklahoma State losing, 
right because then after that really it's just Notre Dame do you put in a one loss Notre Dame when they don't have to play for a championship right because Alabama had the same record in the regular season as Notre Dame I would say yes I lean towards yes even if Georgia comes back the committee's going to have a very difficult decision and you would think they're going to have a great opportunity to make the playoff I, I think they're likely in Dave Third down and eight, play clock at one. They didn't get it off in time. Unless Billy Napier called the timeout first. Let's see. Delay game. Nope. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remain third down. We'll, we'll find out the final rankings tomorrow. You and Tom both part of our coverage. College football playoff selection show presented by AT&T 5G. Starting at noon Eastern on ESPN and going through the night. Breaking down all the, I mean imagine though if like. Alabama gets in with two losses and Cincinnati gets left out again I don't think that's going to happen but we'll find out for sure tomorrow Cincinnati wins I think they're in I think they punch their ticket regardless absolutely Lewis with time receiver comes free and it's a first down out near the 41 yard line Errol Rogers with the catch and a strike by Lewis. Well, as we're going to see this unfold, watch the protection up front. Just a three-man rush. And Levi Lewis has all day as that in-cutting route comes open, and he fires a strike. Back to throw again. Downfield, wide open, a sliding catch by Rodgers inside the 40-yard line. So that third down and 13 that App State allowed Louisiana to get the first down, that could really come back to haunt them. No question. Around the move now inside the 40 yard line. Picking up the tempo, trying to catch this App State defense on their heels. Dusty, that should have been a touchdown. Levi Lewis under threw that ball. He would have been off to the races. Officials allowing App State to substitute. Bad snap. Good throw by Lewis, but I'm going to say it actually hit the turf. He did a good job, though, just to collect that and get rid of it. Trying to hit Jefferson. Louisiana's won 11 straight games after losing its season opener to Texas. One of those wins came here against App State October 12th, 41 to 13. This game obviously closer with the Mountaineers down just seven, but in need of a stop. Off the left side, Bailey. Not much. Push back. Boy, Trey Cobb has been all over the field. Some contact out of bounds. No flag, though. Cobb and Bailey got tangled up there. Cobb finished the play defensively, but they did not throw a flag. This is, boy, right on the brink. Woo! Trey Cobb might have got away with one. Over on the far sidelines. As he took him down, it, it almost looked like he held up a yeah, little he bit. Did. I agree. Just that jerking motion out of bounds. As a former defender, I appreciate the non-flag, but I think I've seen less called throughout the course of the season. You never know in a situation like that. Huge, crucial third down for Louisiana. And Levi Lewis has been great so far throwing the ball on third down and on fourth down. He's just going to hand it off here. And Bailey's got the first down and more inside the 20-yard line. Heading for the end zone. Touchdown. Let's take a look here. Excellent job here, Max Mitchell. We're going to see this come out in here, and then a jump cut, and it's off to the races for Amani Bailey. Max Mitchell with an excellent down block. You see Johnny Lampkin come back across. And how about the vision, jump cut ability, and the speed in the open field from Amani Bailey. He started the second half hot, and man, App State has not had an answer for him in the latter half of this game. He got the scepter, too. Did you see that? I yes. guess when you when you score a big touchdown like that, you get to you get to have the scepter. The extra point is good, and it's a two-score game. 24-10, Louisiana early fourth, looking to win the Sun Belt Championship. True freshman Amani Bailey with a spectacular run and score, and he gets the scepter.
ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Run it. Sunbelt Championship game here in Lafayette. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville. And Louisiana in front now, 24 to 10 after a 35 yard touchdown run by Amani Bailey. Almost all of his 95 rushing yards have come here in the second half. Didn't see a ton of them in the first half, but he's been the primary ball carrier here in the third and early port part of the fourth quarter. And now you're in trouble if you're Appalachian State because now Chase Bryce has struggled throwing the ball, but you might need to start really thinking about that. Down two scores with 12 minutes to go. Virgil on the return past the 20 yard line and then out to the 25. Yeah, how about the circus catch he had earlier in this half? That was a third down that he grabs with one hand, hauls it in, heads up play there. Love the cut, vision, acceleration, running away from defenders. Just remarkable that his only offer was Northwestern State. I mean, how does a guy like this go unnoticed? And what a find by Billy Napier and his staff. Well, how about this one, Dusty? You're in a pandemic, right? So you can't get kids on your campus. So they finally get him on campus coming into the season, and that's how they signed him. That's worked out great. Got a bright future here. Bryce to throw on first down. Long pass of the sideline is caught by Wells. And he's just short of the line to gain. Good timing route right there from Chase Bryce hitting Wells in stride out of his break. And they're going to need Chase Bryce to be able to hit some throws down the field here in this fourth quarter if App State's going to get back in this ball game. Third team all Sun Belt newcomer of the year after transferring from Duke, started his career at Clemson, was there for three years, primary backup to Trevor Lawrence. Back to throw here. And dumps it off across the middle to about the 38 yard line to Mike Evans, the tight end. McCaskill with the stick, and then you see him with the headbutt to one of the offensive line, but I think it was more playful than anything. Both guys were kind of doing it. A bit of chippiness. We mentioned seven times these teams have played in four years, and a lot of these guys have played in all seven of these matchups. Some. Uh, some hostility out there between these two teams. Cooper Hodges absolutely drilled McCasco, but then so I don't know if that was like a hey you got me kind of headbutt. Running out of room on that far sideline is Noel, so it's a loss of the play. But watch after the big hit there, the guys are jawing and then I, I'm surprised they didn't throw the flag, even if it was playful. I mean, you didn't see Hodges react as if. Well, what Hodges did prior to that was far worse than that little headbutt. <laughs> it's right. Again, to me, that's almost gamesmanship. Like, yeah. let's go. Let's right. strap it up. Right. I'd like to see it. Either that or Hodges' head is a lot harder than McCaskill's. <laughs> as it didn't move. Big third down here for App State. Bryce Long throw. Overthrown. Almost intercepted by Solomon. You'd have to think App State would go for it on fourth and six. No, they're going to punt it. Ten minutes to go. A bad throw once again by Chase Bryce. Doesn't have a whole lot of pressure in his face. Completely misfires high of Malik Williams. And boy, that's the second one today that Cameron Solomon's had right in his hands, unable to bring it in. They're going to watch that on film at some point. They say, yo, come on, get on the jug, start catching the football. Missed opportunity there for a pick from Cameron Solomon. How about Chase Bryce? 9 of 22 passing, 81 yards. It's been a really rough day. Fair catch at the 23 yard line. Louisiana closing in on the Sun Belt Championship with possession up 24 10. The Sun Belt Championship on ESPN is presented by Papa John's. It's bacon mania at Papa John's with the new triple bacon pizza. Order today and in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. The road to Gainesville for Billy Napier who will start his duties full time as the Florida head coach tomorrow. He's been splitting duties watching the Gators and studying them and trying to evaluate the team that he has while coaching this team and getting them ready to win a championship. Got to give him 
his staff and the players a ton of credit. They have not played at all like a team that is in semi transition. They've been outstanding from the onset. Opening drive. Go right down, defense, focused, locked in. Really is a testament to Billy Napier, his staff, and these players, and everything they've built here over the past four seasons. Montrell Johnson taken down for a loss by Nick Hampton and that's a big play because you had to think Louisiana was going to try to run the ball and milk clock but now you lose five yards on first down where well, Nick Hampton's first step is so explosive inside just takes a quick step inside gets underneath the tight end gets in the backfield had an excellent season off the edge for the Mountaineers. Levi Lewis here, right? Milking clock stage, as you kind of referenced. But is it after the negative play, although they get a free play here as Hampton was offside? Shot downfield, thrown out of bounds, incomplete. So a free five yards because Hampton was offside. Offside, defense, number 31, in the neutral zone at the time of the snap. Five yard penalty. You don't see this everywhere, but I think it's worth noting how the offensive line on an offside just stays. Yeah. So that there's no chance of like a holding to, to ruin that. I mean, you're going to be pretty well coached to, to do that, right? Absolutely. Good, astute observation by you, Mr. Pash. And <laughs> I think that it's shown throughout the course of the day that's an extremely well coached team. They run Montrell Johnson here on second and nine. He's up to the 28. Hampton again making a play. Third down coming up. Got to get this stop here if you're out of state. Louisiana's had good success on third down throughout the course of this ball game. You know, Dusty, you talk about that discipline with the offensive line, Dave. You mentioned it on the false start right there. This is a team not only is well coached, but you don't see false starts. You don't see sloppy stuff from this football team. Yeah, and again, just given that you've got a head coach that's Moving on tomorrow, you got a lot of members of the staff that are going to go with him, yet they have invested, they, they've given these players what they deserve, and that's their, their time and energy towards trying to win a conference championship, not thinking about the next step. Lewis gets out of there initially and then runs out of room. Plus, that stops the clock with 8.43 to go for a moment anyway. Fourth down, though, and Louisiana's going to have to punt the ball. Trey Cobb got him out of play. Design quarterback run game and Trey Cobb diagnosed it does a good job. You see Levi Lewis as he's done all day long so tough to tackle. But this was not a play that he could have elected to throw the football down the field. This is a run the entire way. Good quality defense by App State getting a quick three and out and getting their offense the ball back. Reese Burns back at his 15 yard line to punt. And it's a line drive that takes a huge Louisiana bounce inside the 20-yard line. All the way down to the 17. 52-yard punt. A reminder that fans can log on to the ESPN app and ESPN3 for the Sun Belt Championship postgame trophy ceremony immediately following the game. Louisiana in command 24 10 feels like this is kind of it here for Appalachian State they got to get down and get a score have all their timeouts 8 16 to go and that means Chase Bryce has to get it going it hasn't happened yet though he's 9 of 22 for 81 yards passing and they still have their offense they can still run the ball but at some point he's gonna have to make a play with his arm they do run it here and Harrington is out to the 23 yard line for a gain of six, but the clock's moving. Percy Butler coming up, just getting a little bit of the ankle from his safety spot. Good thing he was able to get a hand on Harrington. There's a hole opening up there for Harrington, but shoestring tackle brings the App State running back to the ground. They got to get going a little bit, don't they, Dave? Taking a lot of time here off the clock. Keep it on the ground, Harrington. Able to break a tackle and get to the edge and get a first down out of bounds at the 32 yard line. This is where you'd like to see him go tempo. First down, up at the line of scrimmage, get a call in quick. 
no sense of urgency whatsoever. Down 14 with under eight minutes to play. None. Zero. Let's go. Price to throw in trouble steps up to run and he's got the first down all the way to midfield before he's tracked down by Farad Gardner but that's an 18 yard pickup. Nice job by Chase Price once again it was Chauncey Manack with initial pressure and there was a hole that opened up a lot of green grass out in front and Chase Price it's kind of been the best aspect of his game here today. Nice quality pickup of 19. Clock at seven minutes and counting. Down 14 points. Play action pass. Bryce being chased and throws it away. That was Manak again, backside. Got a shot in on Bryce. Chauncey Manak. Excellent job and a big hit. Here on Chase Bryce. Also in there, Jaquan Nelson. Give him a love tap as he goes to the ground. He's been beaten and battered here today, partner. But well, Dusty, you're talking about some of these guys, just the NFL guys move at a different speed. 17's moving at a different speed. He's so good setting the edge, too, in the run game. Originally signed with Georgia coming out of high school. Bryce, that ball took a while to get there, but haven't signaled yet whether it's a catch or an incompletion waiting for an official to say something and now they rule incomplete that the ball hit the ground and it was not caught by Deshaun Davis. It's a throw that Chase Bryce needs to make. He's got a receiver open. Did look like it skipped off the turf, Dave. Curl route. Tough to see from that angle. They have not stopped it to review it further. Every play is reviewed, so they are looking at it right now. Just a question whether they want to look a little bit longer at it but it doesn't seem that that's the case and now you got third down and ten of the play clock winding down you don't want to have to burn a timeout but they're going to wow interesting clock management here down the stretch by F State the amazing job that Billy Napier has done here at Louisiana in four years if they win it'll be victory number 40 in their first outright Sun Belt champ. They were co-champs a year ago. Single season school record 12 wins. That's if they can close it out. They're getting a little bit closer depending on the next couple downs here for App State. Third down and 10 for the Mountaineers at midfield. They just had to burn a timeout. Either had to or chose to. To just make sure they were set here for a good third down call. They have yet to convert on third and long. Bryce in trouble. Everybody covered. Now a receiver comes free. And it's Hennigan with a first down catch down to the 36 yard line and a gain of 14. Good find a little bit of time there by Chase Bryce. Nothing open initially. Moving around in the pocket a little bit. Thomas Hennigan comes open and he locates him with a strike for a first down. Bryce to throw with time. Everybody covered again. So he's on the run and throws it away. I'm going to tell you what, these Louisiana defensive backs have been physical with these App State wide receivers. No separation. Him and these guys up. I mean, Chase Bryce, he's had some of his own deficiencies throwing the football with consistent accuracy. But man, the struggle is real for these App State wide receivers to get off of some of this tight physical coverage and come open. Fourteen point deficit for Appalachian State two timeouts remaining second and ten Bryce steps up to run across the 30 inside the 25 for a first down Tracked down by Manak at the 24 gain of 12 Clock at 615 they'll start it on the ready for play once the chains are set so much green grass at the second level of this Louisiana defense and credit Chase Bryce. He's located many times throughout the course of this ball game and he's made their defense pay. It's got to be a part of the progression, right? If they're going to run man to man defense, you don't like what you see in your progression. Duck it and run. Don't have to be a great athlete to figure that out. He's been better with his feet than in his arm so far in this game. Here's a quick throw out in space to Williams, who's taken down for a loss of the play by Podesclo. Second down and 10 or second and 11 depending on the spot. Quality physical tackle by Podesclo. 
And again, <laughs> App State not in any kind of a rush. They continue to let this clock tick down to around 10 seconds. Right, so the longer it goes, if they do score, the more need they're going to have for an onside kick recovery rather than just kick it a deep. But Bryce all oh, dropped inside the five by Williams. He might have scored had he caught it. It just has not been App State's day. Man, Malik Williams so good out of the slot. He's got that speed. He's on a deep over route, running away from the coverage. Ball finally delivered where it needs to be on the hands of Malik Williams, and he can't bring it in. Big missed opportunity there, and as you mentioned, would have walked in for six points. Instead, third and long for this App State offense. Four down territory, obviously, here down two scores, 521 to go. Pressure off the edge. It's picked up. Bryce throws behind. Hennigan incomplete. Fourth down. Second down, it's on the receiver. Third down, it's on the quarterback. Behind his intended target. Hennigan open there in the middle of the field. And as we've seen many times here throughout the course of this ballgame, Chase Bryce, he just misfired. This is it right here. Fourth down and 10. Got to move the chains or get in the end zone. They did convert on fourth down earlier. This is fourth and 10. Let's see if Louisiana brings pressure. Bryce in trouble, moving to his left. And what a catch by Hennigan inside the 10. Spins and scores. What a play by Thomas Hennigan. And App State is still alive. Wow. What an outstanding individual effort by Thomas Hennigan. See Chase Bryce reset his feet, go up, grab that ball with strong hands, and fight to get to the end zone. Thomas Hennigan, he says this game isn't over yet. App State not going out without a fight. Incredible individual effort right there, Dave. That was, wow. Meanwhile, they're going for two, which is puzzling. The extra point, it's 24-17. If you don't get it here, then you need a two-point play just to tie. Bryce on the rollout, steps up, and then throws it in the dirt, incomplete. Why would you go for two there with five minutes to go? Well, I'm guessing because that's what the analytics say. I feel like sometimes coaches live and die by what that analytics book says, and I just, I am not a fan of it. I kicked the field, we got some momentum after that touchdown. You cut it to a seven point game, knowing all you need now is to score a touchdown, kick the extra point. I just, I know that there's probably numbers that back it up. I'm just not one that agrees with those numbers in a lot of cases, and especially that one right there. If those numbers exist, they should be ripped up and thrown in the trash. Five minutes to go, a one-score game, kick the extra point. Totally with you. Now you're in a situation where if you do get the ball back, you have to score and get a two-point play just to play for overtime. I don't know if they're concerned about overtime, and so that's why they're going for two there to try to win it in regulation, figuring if we get the two-point play, and we're in a chance, we have the ball back and a chance to score. We're going to win the game with an extra point. Not sure. That must have been what it was they were thinking. That's the only explanation. We'll see if they kick it deep here or go for an onside kick. And Hughes does kick it deep to Smith. Be a touchback and come out to the 25. And again, App State had to burn a timeout on that last possession, so two remaining for the Mountaineers. They don't have to call them just yet. You got five minutes to go. You can save them for now. It's been a great day for Levi Lewis, the outstanding senior quarterback from Baton Rouge, making his 41st career start. Not eye popping numbers, but man, he made some. Electric plays in the first half with a long touchdown run and then also on fourth down Getting out of pressure and avoiding a sack keeping a drive going that ended up in a touchdown His escapability and the ability to extend the play has been crucial for Louisiana to build this lead in this ballgame Monty Bailey is the running back. He's had a great second half. He gets the carry here. No running room 
DeMarco Jackson and Trey Cobb. Also Caden Smith, the safety coming down, making the play. It'll be second down and long. And App State will not use a timeout. Louisiana has had four three and outs throughout the course of today. Have not needed one as, as, as crucial as they need one right now in this spot. Swing pass here, Bailey on the catch. Gets a first down with a couple of nifty moves out past the 35-yard line. Man, he has been a star here in the second half for the Ragin' Cajuns. He really has. I'm going to tell you what, App State was loaded up for bear on this. Everybody right there inside the box. And I love the play call by Billy Napier. Understanding that App State's selling out to stop the run. Simple play action. Dump it down to your explosive running back in the flats. Easy pitch and catch and move the chains for a big first down. They're going to run Bailey here. And he's past the 45 and gets a first down out across midfield to the 49-yard line. Bach will stop to reset the chains inside four minutes to go. Not surprising, running behind the right side of that offensive line. Big 58 Osiris Torrance, 74 Max Mitchell, paving the path for Imani Bailey. Next star running back here at Louisiana. And Dusty, how about the wherewithal for the freshman on the previous play? He could have ran that out of bounds. Knows to cut it back in, keep that clock rolling. Just a smart, instinctive kid. Over 100 yards now on the day. After the next play, you would think App State would use a timeout. Lewis going to keep it here. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 46 yard line, so a gain of three. And at this point, if you're Levi Lewis, that clock's got to tick all the way down as far as it possibly can before they snap it. You don't want to snap this football anywhere above five seconds, I would think, Dave. Allow that clock to roll. Shrink this game as much as you possibly can. I would imagine they don't want him going out of bounds again. Save a little time. Obviously, inside two minutes, and he got a bounds play. Would, uh, the clock would not start until the snap. They take it down to about two and snap it. Bailey hit in the backfield by Jackson. They blow it dead. It's a loss on the play. Let's see if App State uses a timeout. Yep. It will. That will leave the Mountaineers with one. There was no title game last year because of COVID. This is the third straight year, third straight championship game where these two teams have met. 2018, App State won behind two long touchdown runs by quarterback Zach Thomas. That was 30 to 19. And then two years ago, App State was up 42 to 17 after a pick six by Josh Thomas. And the Mountaineers held on to repeat as Sun Belt champs. Eli Drinkwitz getting showered was the coach then. Nobody's met more since 2018 than Louisiana and Appalachian State. This will also be Billy Napier's final game as the head coach here. Accepted the Florida job. He's been coaching both this week, kind of evaluating the Gators, his new team, and then also told us when we spoke with him yesterday, loyalty means something to him. And it was non-negotiable, he said, when he talked with the Florida folks said he wanted to finish what he started here and win a conference championship. Will not coach in bowl game, but this means more to the players and to the coaches winning your conference. Massive play right here. App State with a chance to stay alive. Do they let Levi Lewis put it in the air, potentially stop the clock with an incompletion? Or do they keep it on the ground to try to get this first? It's third down and eight. One timeout left for Appalachian State. Play clock at 10. They're going to run it. Bailey, he's got a gap, and he's got a first down right at the marker at the 39. Let's see where they spotted. It looked like a first down initially. It is. And App State now in big time trouble. How about this? Watch this big 58. Pave the path, and they're going to hit it right downhill. Osiris Terrence, boom, completely opening up a massive hole as Terrence at 335 pounds working on just a 235 pound Caleb Sperlin 
Size matters down there in the trenches at times. Key block. Huge first down. Montrell Johnson is in here. App State can only stop it one more time. Play clock at one. Johnson gets away from one man and does get a yard. Appalachian State will stop it here and use its final timeout. So two minutes to go. All right, so let's uh, change gears a little bit here because obviously a lot of eyes are on that SEC championship. Alabama, last check, at least up here, was a two touchdown lead for the Crimson Tide. Three touchdowns. Three touch okay, so yeah. Alabama goes to what? Alabama goes to number one if it, if it wins? I think Alabama goes to number one. We'll see what happens with Michigan. If they win, I think they stay two. I'd expect Georgia to be in at three. And Cincinnati's going to win their ball game. I think they're in at four. I mean, it kind of locks everything up so far for tonight. But. Yeah, here are our picks, and, and you can see here we really Wait. disagreed. Wait a minute. You guys copying off of me? Tom, Dave? You cheaters? I'm What's not anywhere near you. I couldn't have. Now, Dave, that's another question. Here's one for you. Okay, let's say Michigan loses tonight okay. to Iowa. What yeah. happens if Michigan loses? Notre Dame or Baylor? I think Notre Dame gets in. Um, me too. I think they put Notre Dame in. And boy, how interesting that would be with Brian Kelly already leaving, going to LSU, and Marcus Freeman named head coach. Uh, just yesterday and the Big Ten Conference which you can make a case was the best conference of college football all season doesn't have a team in the college football playoff because they beat each other up all year it's left out yep wild wild season I'm just happy really happy for Cincinnati and the group of five I, I really questioned and didn't know if they legitimately had a chance to make the current structure of the playoff and they're getting in that's awesome Johnson gets a yard, so it'll be third down and long here. No timeouts left for App State, so the next snap will come with about a minute 20 to go. We'll see if Louisiana decides to just hand it off here. Even if they don't get the first down, they're punting with 30 seconds left. I think no question this ball staying on the ground. And I would anticipate they're going to run it off the right side. That's where I would go. Osiris Torrance, Max Mitchell. Two potential NFL caliber players. Osiris Torrance had a car accident at the week of Liberty. Missed the last two games back this week. And his presence has been felt in the run game off that right side. Louisiana will call a timeout to talk things over here. Make sure they're all set. They don't make a mistake. Under Billy Napier, prior to uh, three straight 10-win seasons, there were none. Prior to Napier taking over this program, ranked in the AP poll the last two seasons, they're currently number 24. Four straight Western Division championships, co-champs in the Sun Belt last year because of no title game, wiped out by COVID, and they're 119 away from winning this one and sending uh, Coach Napier off to Florida. And he told us, first of all, I would have to thank the Louisiana fans. Just love what Billy Napier's done. And to come back and finish it off here with the championship, wow. What an exclamation point you put on a stellar four-year tenure. What's going to be fascinating to see is how this same plan, because he told us he's taken the exact same plan that he used when he came here, and he's taken it to Gainesville, Florida. And he believes in it, and it's tough to argue with the success that he's shown here at, at Louisiana Lafayette University. And Dusty, this time around, he's going to have more bells and whistles and resources to execute it. No question. He told us Florida fully committed to doing whatever they need to do to get back atop the SEC East. So third down and eight. No timeouts left for Appalachian State. And Lewis will hand it off here. And Bailey gets hit hard after a gain of one. So it's fourth down. You can take it down to about 30 seconds left. They could still call another timeout. What do you do? Do you run a play here or do you punt it? Do you punt. try a field goal? What do you do? Punt it. Okay. No question. Punt, punt, the, punt. The kicker has struggled. Right, we've established that. Yep. I think clearly you punt it. Pooch punt, try to pin him back there and force Chase Bryce with no timeouts left to travel a majority of the length of the field to try to get a touchdown and then still have to make the two point to tie this thing up. And the way your defense has played throughout the duration of this game. You gotta like your outlook if you're Billy Napier. Standing ovation here for the Rage and Cajuns, not just for today and not just for this season, but for what this program has become. 
what Billy Napier and these players have been able to accomplish in a short time. And again, it, it bears repeating with, and I, I don't know what you know Brian Kelly's situation was or Lincoln Riley's, but you know they elected not to coach their current teams. They elected to head on to the next step. The job that Billy Napier is taking in Florida is a similar job, right it's there with a those big time job. No doubt. Yet he is coaching this game. He's not going to coach the bowl game, but he's coaching them right now. No doubt. And I had the utmost respect. And look at that. Thank you. Look at this crowd. Loving it. Biggest crowd we've ever seen for a Sun Belt Conference Championship game. Good on you, Lafayette, Louisiana. Here's how the day started on arrival. Love it. Love it. He got emotional with us yesterday talking about you know, what the city has meant to him. And Ryan Magger, the AD, giving him an opportunity to be the head coach here. They don't have the punt team out here, Dave. So fourth down, potential quick kick here. I mean, you're not going to run the ball, right? I would, I would think not. I would. Because on a change of possession, clock's going to stop anyway. I would imagine, or maybe they will, just because it's high percentage. And you get the first down, the game's over. If you don't, then App State gets the ball there. Pretty close to the line of scrimmage for a quick kick if yeah. you're Lewis. Got to throw it. And it's incomplete. So 30 oh. seconds oh. left. Wow. I'm somewhat shocked by that. Play call right there. Somewhat. I'm really shocked. <laughs> right? I'm very confused uh, on wow. exactly what just transpired there. Unable to hit the slant. But I mean, clock's going to stop and change of possession, or you just thought they should have run the ball? I just, no. I thought they should have punted the ball. Yeah. I thought sure. they should have forced App State to travel as much in length of field as possible. Plus, if you punt the ball, I mean, I would imagine as the ball's hanging in the air with the snap time, right. kick time, it's yeah. going to turn off more seconds off of that clock. They Still have. a long way to go for Chase Price in this offense. And they have a punter that was the first team all Sun Belt punter as well. You think you trust him to just get rid of it and trust your long snapper, but they didn't. So App State ball, no timeouts. Bryce in trouble. Ball comes out. Louisiana's got it. Chris Moncrief hacked it out. He celebrates. Louisiana's going to win the championship. Moncrief on a blitz, comes off the edge. Big hit on Chase Bryce. And Louisiana going to win the Sun Belt Conference Championship here on their home field. That's why Billy Napier didn't need a punt. Trust his defense that much. Didn't see the recovery there, but it is Louisiana ball with 21 seconds left. No timeouts remaining for App State. So they got to review this here to just make sure that the hand of Chase Bryce had not started going forward. Let's take another look here. Ooh, well, that's, I think that's going to be overturned. It's, that looks like an incompletion. To yes, me, I'm with you. First good look I'd actually seen of that. I, I think that's going to be incomplete. He's still got the football in his hand. His arm is going forward. That's an incomplete pass. Hold off on the celebration just yet. Well, they'd have to look at the clock here. Yep. Because did they need to add on a couple seconds based on when the play would have been blown dead as opposed to when the ball was recovered? Had to take a couple seconds. He's got a firm grasp of that football, right? Yeah. The arm is moving forward as it comes out. So multiple aspects, as you mentioned, to look at on this play for the replay booth. But again, ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Louisiana. No timeouts remaining for Appalachian State. If the Mountaineers get the ball back, it would be second down from their 36 yard line. But again, they need a touchdown and a two point conversion just to tie the game. They scored a touchdown the last time they had a ball, but uh, they elected to not kick and go for two, and that failed. 
Here's a call from Kyle Olsen, the referee. After video review, it is an incomplete pass. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, Whoa. number six. That's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first and 10 for App State at the 49-yard line. Okay, wow. Chris Moncrief celebrating after the play. Gets flagged for 15 yards. You know, at the time you're thinking you've got re the recovery, you can take your helmet off and, and celebrate, but it's a penalty. It wouldn't really hurt him if they're on offense, but on defense it does hurt him because now Appalachian State has the ball at midfield, and you know, the Hail Mary is in play now, even if you don't move it here, but you got 26 seconds left. As the great Lee Corso has famously coined, not so fast, my friend. They put five seconds back on the clock. Ball at the 49 of Louisiana. No timeouts left. Bryce stepping up. His arm hit again, and this time it's taken away by Manak. What a play by Manak. He hacked it out, and he recovered it. Louisiana ball. This one, I believe, there's no doubt. What a outstanding individual effort here by Chauncey Manak, one of the great pass rushers in the Sun Belt Conference as he works his way around Anderson Hardy. Flipping his hips, getting to the quarterback and knocking the ball loose. Watch his hip flip. Boom, flips his hips as we call that the windshield wiper, Dave, and gets that ball loose before that arm starts to come forward. They're going to review this, but it's pretty know. clear that uh, Manak yeah. got it out before the hands started going forward with, with the ball. They can review it. I, that looked like as clear a cut fumble as possible. And how about that? How about this? A That's big awesome. Hug. He took it right off of his hand. No doubt. That is that is clinic tape. Absolutely. Rush. Get the hands, flip the hips, finish at the quarterback. Well, as we've seen, you know, Cincinnati looks like it's going to make the college football playoff. But as we've seen, not just at Cincinnati, but here at Louisiana, Coastal Carolina last year, some of these other schools in the group of five, there's some great players at this level. Yes. No question. Several players on this field today going to have an opportunity to keep playing football. A lot of these players won't. But we've definitely seen some great individual efforts here this afternoon. After video review, the fumble has been confirmed. First and 10 from Louisiana to the 44 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 23 seconds. But all it takes is a knee on the ground for Lafayette. And a Gatorade shower for Billy Napier will happen. You got two offensive linemen. <laughs> they fart. <laughs> Sparkling over who gets to yeah, do it? Right. <laughs> Who's going first? Oh, that's great. You know what? Billy Napier said, remember what he told us yesterday? I've had a blast, as he said with a big smile. He said he always wanted his team, watching his dad, a high school coach. He's had his opportunity to get his first chance to head coach here, and he's loved every minute of it. And everybody affiliated with the Louisiana football program should have loved every minute of Billy Napier. Now on to his next chapter. Can't wait to see how that goes. He finished it off with a championship. 12 straight wins for Louisiana after losing week one to Texas and the first outright Sun Belt title for the Raging Cajuns. Final score 24 to 16. And Billy Napier's swan song as the head coach here in Lafayette. Coming up next, the prelims for UFC Fight Night. And for live coverage from this game of our post-game trophy ceremony, you can log on to ESPN3 and the ESPN app. For Dusty Dvorak, Tom Bill, our entire crew, I'm Dave Pash. So long from the Sun Belt title game. Louisiana is the 2021 champs. Now it's Chicha to Vegas, UFC Fight Night.